Yeah, I'm ready. I think I'm ready. Fantastic. Ready. Let's get the show going. True <laughs> Let's get North started. Views Podcast, Toronto's official, unofficial podcast discussing hip hop, R and B, and the culture. Know. Welcome to episode 105. 105. I go by the name of Harris. Y'all know me. Skirt master, Mr. Triple Double himself, no assist. Jeez. Stealing 70 mil from the TTC. Jeez. I'm gonna be a champion. You already know me. You can call me just Shola. Jeez. And as usual, we are giving you our views from the perspectives of a couple of first generation Canadians. Uh, 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 wow. How convenient. Hold on. As you can see, my laptop is nice and propped up, so my <laughs> hand is swift now. I'm just like, <laughs> check our YouTube if you want to see how close my hand is now. Yeah, it's really close. Uh, it's you been working. Really Again, we're, we're keep looking for ways to you know, get them tell people to check our YouTube. Uh, our day one numbers are starting to look better. Day one. Okay. Uh, actually, we got the monthly report. Ooh, the monthly report looking nice. The monthly report. Hold on. Let me actually show you what it said, because it surprised me. Hey. Okay, so for one month, right? Or for the month, I wait, suppose. Wait, are we doing this on, 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 on the air? Yeah. Okay. I... Yeah, we're, we're transparent. I think, I, I think that's what makes people like us is that um, they grow with us here. So, nine new subscribers. Hey, let's bless up, bless Which up. is bless. Uh, 1,300 views. Whoa. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> hey. <laughs> Hey, you know what? That's not even a wall. That's expected, man. That's expected. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That's expected. Um, 3,500 minutes watched. That's YouTube, right? YouTube. In the last month. Hey, yo, whoever's putting your YouTube on repeat over and over again, shout out to you. Yo, bro, but it says 1,300 views, so it don't even matter about repeat. Hey. Because it's IP. IP will block that's you. True. You know what I'm it saying? It will stop you from repeating. So that's it. unique views. 1,300. Hey, thank you. To all the people that are listening to us for the first time, thank you. <laughs> to everyone that's listened to us before, come on, man. Thank you, and to everyone that will listen to us in the future and get our views up, thank you. And that's just you two. Yeah, we haven't said that one in a while, so let's give an applause for that. Yes. <laughs> and of course, let's tell the people where they can find us. You can Please find do. us on Twitter, on Instagram, and on YouTube, as we mentioned. <laughs> yes, we at did. True North Views. Very easy to spell. Very direct. Very simple. Uh, what you'll find on our YouTube, of course, is our full episode, full episodic yep. experience, including the visuals. Uh, oftentimes, if they check our YouTube, <laughs> you'll see what we actually good say. Good reason. Do, what we actually did. Um, otherwise, of course, um, you know, if you want to follow us on Twitter, whole bunch of random liking, tweeting, uh, music conversation, hashtag of the day, topic of the day, whatever it may be. Uh, just know that at this point, since we are into three figures, uh, it is over a 100% likelihood that in this <laughs> quarantine, uh, anything that you see from the at True North Views Twitter page, yeah. um, I was Back home smoking legal. meditating. Meditation, you see, is very important. I'm trying to get my streak going again. I think I'm at 26 days Jeez. and counting. Um, so let's Jeez. keep that going. Uh, yeah, you're right. Cheese, cheese, cheese. <laughs> uh, let's keep that going. But you see, it teaches you two things. It teaches you acceptance. It teaches you awareness. And if you can get those two keys to life, you get these Twitter fingers off, man. It really gets as simple as that. On Instagram, you will find, um, you know, 60 second sound bites from our respective episode Zer. for the week. Um, you know, themed topics at times. Uh, other times, it's kind of more random conversation. Mm -hmm. Uh, what the hell did we talk about last week? I'm trying to remember. Holy shit. I gotta see the notes. I gotta um, check Instagram. <laughs> I used to check through the notes for that, and I'm like, why don't I just look at Instagram? That does make sense, you know? <laughs> so, <laughs> we talked about LL Cool J. Do we need to put more respect on his we name? Did. Uh, a lot of people said, yes, we definitely do. Um, you know, the, the he coined the term OG. Uh, no, OG, sorry. He, oh. he coined the term GOAT. Um, you know, mm -hmm. there would be no GOAT talk if it wasn't for LL. Okay. And I listen, I get it. But, but we said not. he's Dr. J. He's not. Exactly. <laughs> we Yo, said he's Dr. He's, J. He's a goat, but he's not the goat. You know what I'm saying? Thank you. Like, Thank yeah, you. Um, we, we talked about that. We talked about Lil Wayne and Drake, just the synergy that they have, yep. of course. Um, so check that out on our Instagram page. Uh, reviewed the Jojo. Good to Know JoJo yep. album. Um, very interesting review. And we put about uh, the post about thoughts on producers rapping. Yes. How do you feel 
hating on Hit Boy while Kanye <laughs> is your favorite rapper. Yo, so it it's a very sense. you know interesting um, you know dichotomy of of situations going on. I'm just trying to talk like Ti at this point. But yeah, follow us on Instagram, <laughs> follow us on Twitter, follow us on YouTube at True North Views. We would greatly appreciate it. On our Facebook, you will find us at True North Views Podcast. Yes, sir. And actually, those numbers surprised me up. as well. On a um, Tuesday. So, on our Facebook page, because we don't really promote it, yeah, really do anything with it. On the back burner. No lie, it's on the back burner. You know, yeah. we're, we're building the foundation. <laughs> um, exactly. But it's just shared shit from Instagram, right? Ah, so it just automatically shares. Shares, Smart. right? So, you know, we would get a couple views, yeah. right? A couple views. Um, but now, it's our Facebook page, we got 30 people that like it. Hey. And 55 people that follow. Hey. Somehow, some way, over the last two weeks or so. So again, shout out to quarantine. The word clearly is spreading. We greatly appreciate it. Um, those who are fans of the show, um, those who are listening to us on a yes. regular basis. Again, thank you so much. And like Shola just said, please continue to tell a friend, 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 to tell a friend. Clearly, the social experiment is working. Right. All right, now should I tell the number one rule? Uh, <laughs> and that is the end of the show. Uh, we wanted to keep it short this time around. Oh, no, yeah. let's. Uh, it definitely will be shorter, oh, yes. though. Let's go. In that it. is without a doubt. Uh, I don't even really have a pre-potpourri because really I didn't even realize sense. this week went by. It, I guess that really will fast. be the pre-potpourri is that last week felt like two days ago. Yeah, you're right. So, like, this week went by real fast. So there's like li- no change of mind. Really no, nothing. No new ventures. No... Nothing. Nothing. And with quarantine, it doesn't even make it, it, there really is nothing to do. Mm. That's a huge argument, though. I'd argue hugely against that. I think everything that work has been stopping you from doing, and you still work, I get it. (laughs) So do I. (laughs) But after after, uh, extracurricular shit, Mm, right? You can't do extracurricular no more. So Mm -hmm. in the other x amount of hours that you have because there is less traffic there although is. traffic like a motherfucker right now lately bro yo right <laughs> hey, that's what i was like yo where did you even come from yo there's tra- everything is still closed no there's still traffic no. on those roads yo traffic is back holy fuck um but no again there's it, shit to do there's shit to do there is i, I yeah there's shit to do or every week i try to at least tell myself try something mm-hmm. um that's like true. it was trying the piano lessons it was trying, trying. to change the space I think what I'm going to do next is uh, some kitchen shit. Jeez. Some kitchen shit. Okay, kitchen shit. And some closet shit. Jeez, closet shit. Some organization, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Some A1 organization. So feel, yeah, feel that's you. next for me. Um, that one but that Mary Lou to clean my house or was that show on Netflix? The what? Mary oh, Lou clean my house. What's it called? Tidying up with Marie Kondo. That girl, yes. Mary Lou, you got it. <laughs> Some um, shit like that. But yeah, man, that's all I really got for pre potpourri. Like yeah, I said, I got nothing, man. Ain't really no real pre potpourri going really on because somehow this week went by. It did. Don't Isn't ask me. Isn't it long weekend coming up soon? Isn't it Mother's Day? <laughs> yeah, Mother's Day tomorrow. Happy Mother's Day. Wait, to happy, all belated. Oh, yeah, happy belated. Oh yeah, belated. Yeah, uh, Mother's that was Day. yesterday. I need Dude, to say. that was yesterday. <laughs> 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 happy belated I just I still didn't drink that water this guy okay he's got open the water for five like, minutes put it back down there's no period in time where I'm gonna stop to drink that water in the next X amount of minutes you know what I'm saying right, so but <laughs> let's get this show started let's start with the music potpourri yes. as usual um, that is where we get into just all things hip hop R&B and the culture we lead that into some keep it or leak it so then get into some shout outs uh, finally, we get into what new music has come out for the week and go a little bit more in depth into what we actually listen to. Yes. And then we tell you in general what is in our rotation. Uh, what in general are we listening to? Is it an mm-hmm. oldie, a throwback? A newbie. Is it a, a newbie? <laughs> is it something that came out in the last month? Hey, Whatever it may be. Is it playlist that. shit? Who knows? We'll find out. So let's get started again, like I said, with the music potpourri. Um, We are going to start, of course, on a bit of a sadder note. Um, Two rest in pieces to mention. Um, First one is to Andre Harrell. Um, Now, I don't know if you've heard that name. It's one of those names that 
you even if you didn't hear at the forefront you were aware of the yeah. name and you were at the very mm-hmm. least aware of who he has inspired yeah. and brought up and his influence on the culture and whatnot it's like the rick rubin like you know in, in that like, sense you don't always see them on the in TV that screen, sense but exactly you know right. what they did um you know andre harrell of course uh you know a lot of people kind of give him that praise for kind of 90s r&b in general mm. in a lot of ways diddy okay coming yeah. up in a lot of ways uh and, and just you know sad sad to see you know very young 59 59 Ooh, did um, you say what how he passed away i didn't read into it okay fair enough i just wanted to know so definitely you know I, I, as usual like we say you know prayers to to loved ones yep. prayers to anyone Family, that friends has been I impacted mean, exactly. by this uh passing of andre harrell we also have to say r.i.p to little richard um, a lot of people did not know Little Richard sang the Magic School Bus song. Come on, the Magic School Bus. Yes. Yo, that's my favorite show as, going, as a kid. And that was one of my favorite shows. you didn't know that was Little Richard? I don't know that was Little Richard. Interesting. I didn't necessarily again, know was that kid, was so Little really Richard. Didn't take in who was singing But it. seeing that it was Little Richard, I wasn't like, oh my God, I didn't realize. I'm like, I get it. Uh, sure. <laughs> right, I, I'm like I get it, but like it's just because I just watched that show religiously as a kid. Yeah, oh no doubt. It's so like it's just classic. Like, like wow, it's still coming up. In my, Little Richard, um, if I'm not mistaken, was 87 or 89. So, um, yeah. so if, you know, thankfully lived a much yeah, fuller exactly. life. Oh, um, but but definitely, you know, rest in peace to that's two iconic that. legends. Um, we're not even halfway through 2020 yet. Jeez, 2020 and is it, horrible, it, it's really wow. It's horrible. Wow, to say the least. Um, let's kind of shake that off with this. And although we're changing our tone, <laughs> um, we're going to get into the baby. Oh, let's get gosh. into the baby. Um, obviously it, it's kind of known what happened at this point. Um, I don't even really care about the story per yeah, se. Me neither. It's not the story I even cared about. I had a... Let's take the well. Let's I guess let's recap it. Yeah. For for, for, for what Quick exactly recap. happened, I really don't know. It's something with a cab driver. I think in it was, Vegas. So the cab driver, he was him and his boys were in a sprinter going from the airport to the hotel. They were smoking. I don't know if it was cigarettes or um, the legal stuff. I saw that happen in uh-huh. uh, Insecure. Really? <laughs> they fought over. <laughs> they the fought one guy smoking. started lighting it up because I'm a I'm addicted to that show. I need to obviously. get into that. I watched like, the first Yo, two fam. episodes and I stopped watching it. Yo, fam. But it's on Crave so I can watch it now. Trust me. Trust Crave me. Season really one good. is like not the best season. See, and that's the thing I keep on hearing. I'm like, I hate that. I have to go through that season. But it's to short. get to the better season. And we'll, we'll, I'll, we'll get I'll into watch that. it. We'll get into that. Um, um, oh, so what he did was the driver's supposedly he told them to... Um, no, let, turn it out, turn it out. Like, what, out it? Turn off the lights out. It's not a Chris song, <laughs> Chris like Brown Neo, song. Neo <laughs> and LT Pain. Turn off the lights out. <laughs> Damn. Oh, yo. Um, yeah, so they, they pretty much said no and they threatened the guy. One guy said, I would have killed you if it was in Jeez. my hometown. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. A bunch of like threats, so that's much where it's at. Oh, yeah, okay. And then, yeah, so somehow the baby uh, gets himself involved in some shit again. Um, and. The question is, you know, when is it too much? And this, this was what I was going to ask you is, does a repeat of something, of a pattern, does it start to... At what point do we start to say, maybe the baby is... Because he's a common denominator in a lot of these problems. Yeah. And I'm not, going to, I'm not going to say straight out it's his fault, but hey, we got to start looking at... Well, we do something. have to look at him, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. It, it, you know, you'll see several times people say, you know, oh, if... If everyone has a problem with you, sometimes you yeah, might well, be the problem. Yeah, and that's what I think it might be right? getting to at this point. Um, we know he's been through trauma. Yeah. Uh, and this is something that, that Maul was mentioning. I was listening to the Joe Budden podcast and, one of the, again, one of the co-hosts, Maul, Shout was talking about it. He was saying he might need, like, a therapy or something. Yep, it could be. Trauma, it could right? Be. Like, when you're in... For lack of better word, and I'm not, and I don't know, I'm not there, so I can't mm-hmm. even speak on it. Well, obviously, we're just talking shit. Um, fight or flight situations. Yeah. And you're so used to fight. That's straight up. First thing that comes in, man says, "Out that, yo, what do you want to do if I don't?" Straight up, like. Exactly, and <laughs> at one point you've had to fight for life, yeah, which he has had to do, <laughs> right? So, is there some kind of traumatic experience, possibly, um, that is continuing to impact him? And how can we get this to stop? Because his brand, believe it or not, has huge. has capped. It really has. His brand will not get bigger than this because there will always be... Slapping a woman. 
the, yeah. the, the hit the and the that top. was the one was like that okay, was the one bro. that was like everyone's like there was the, there was the hotel guy yeah there was um this guy now yeah there's the one at the Gucci store so which, I mean which arguably was not him but still you, your brand like you said but I I, I, hits. I I guess you know when you continue to put 200k first week. You could argue, and then we'll get to so uh, we'll get to someone else that I'm going to talk about. I won't. I'm going to talk but about it. That's all you. I will talk um, about it. But I don't know. I mean, I don't know what to say about the baby, right? Because I mean, we don't know what happened for one, and that's that's why, I can't, <laughs> and that's why I can't say it's all his fault or yeah. it's all someone's fault. But he's a common denominator in all these situations. He's a common denominator. So. I'm just going to go out of limb and say, you know, I'm going to put a little bit of 60% your fault, 40 the other side mm-hmm. right now. Mm-hmm. But I, do you think this hurts his brand? Yeah. Well, and, I, and I almost like want to answer said, that capped. question carefully. Like, like you said, it's cat. I don't think it hurt it. I don't think it went any less. I think people already saw him a certain way. No, and not to speak. Not to say he is. We're just saying but people, people saw him. see him a certain way. And so yeah. this isn't out of character for a lot of people for him. Like, oh, this is the baby doing the baby things right it's not like if it's Fair Drake enough. that this happened I'm like whoa now that was it affected the brand right That's so. no I think you're right I think you're right I think it's just you know and, and like going back to what I said it's capped his brand yes it's not hurting his brand but, but it has capped helping, his brand exactly you, you kind of want to help your brand I'm thinking yeah. and it might be helping it might be short term helping short term attention name, yes. records views etc relevance uh, relevance um, but again, but that's all 15 it minutes. It caps it. And that's why I can't say it hurts it, but I think it caps it. Yeah, you're right. You're right. I agree so, with you. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't know. I don't know. Well, let, let's see I what think happens with the baby. To, uh, I think you said this before. Yeah, maybe you didn't, but like, just change your... I don't know, man. Something just... Don't be in these situations, man. Like, There's you're, ways to walk, turn left. Tell your boys, you'll keep quiet. You're worth too much. Exactly. <clears throat> that's really all it comes down to. Um, there's an interesting random thread I found. Yes. And... Um, I look at I went through this thread because you said thread and I go, let me read it and I was like yo I, get, I didn't finish it that's how good it was I hope this is accurate because he also has another thread this is by somebody named Nick Anegby Nick. oh Aneg yeah, yeah, yeah sure, on, on Twitter Nick Anegby and he had another uh, thread called uh, Hip Hop Rumors or mm. something like that right and I saw uh, President of Dreamville <laughs> respond to one of them about Cole and, and Diddy and basically said that's cap. Well he said it was rumors said, anyway. No cap. So I'm hoping like the facts don't bleed into the rumors. Some of the facts and... I've heard and I know for sure. Well okay. not, not only say I know for sure, but I've heard before so they maybe have a higher chance of being Well right. I want to go through a few random ones. I haven't really gone through this yet. So yeah. this is interesting. This is gonna be interesting now that you have. So on Jan on July wow on July eighteenth <laughs> That's a lot of, uh, that's a mouthful. On July 18th, <laughs> two, oh, I don't know how the date is a mouthful, but really that's a different story. So on July 18th, 2017, hip hop officially surpassed rock and roll as the most consumed music in America. Who we knew? Didn't know that. I knew we, that. We talked about this. We didn't. We've talked about hip hop overtaking rock. <laughs> but we didn't say like the date. Can we just say the date? July like, 18th. We, okay, That's cool to know. It's a it's an interesting fact. It's an interesting <laughs> hip hop fact. Yeah, sure. <laughs> um this one I knew. The best selling rap album of all time is uh, Outcast's two thousand and three speaker box Love Below. If you listen to rap, you have to know this. I you think have it's to facts. know that. That is true. Uh Kanye said he once thought of becoming a porn star, uh once or twice as a way to make money before his music career took off. I've heard of that. No, I never heard of that before. I think he said it on his album. I don't even know. <laughs> um, Funny. Like graduation or some shit. Who knows? Um, I have one here. Lil Wayne. <clears throat> Lil Wayne managed to shoot himself in the bedroom when he was 12 years old. A police officer was able to save his life. The reason I know this is real because he sang on it yeah. on the last track of the Carter 6 or 5. And I feel like he's talked about that. And he's talking, he's, interviewed, he's talking in interviews about it. Um, when Dr. Dre heard the, um, his oh when Dr. Dre heard his tape for the very first time he thought Eminem was black I never heard that before I never heard that one before but, that's interesting this one I knew um, but for those that maybe didn't it's a very interesting fact Jay-Z and Busta Rhymes went to the same high school together and they once battled in their high school cafeteria uh, DMX and Biggie also went to the same school damn that's a legendary high school fan <laughs> crazy you remember? It's like Toby and um, what's his face? Tory Lane battling in high school too. 
Oh, I didn't even know Remember that. Remember we talked about it? We saw there was a clip that came out and it was Tory Lanez and Toby. I probably didn't pay attention. We talked about it on the podcast. I know, but like, you know, I'd be saying <laughs> shit. I'd be saying <laughs> shit. Um, this one I knew as well. Uh, the beat for Clips is Grindin'. I didn't was know originally either. supposed to go to Jay-Z, but Pharrell gave it to Pusha T. 15 minutes. Um, to What? Gave Pusha T 15 minutes to the stu... What? To get to the studio to take it. My fault. Yeah, some... some cause it when was, you're reading in Twitter, if they don't put the punctuations properly, it, it messes you up. Yeah, and you need all the characters you can get, right? So, <laughs> yeah. sometimes something's got to give. Uh, yeah, there's a lot of these, honestly. No, of course. I'm just... Um, look, Kim was pregnant with um, Biggie's baby, but had a miscarriage. I've heard of that before. Uh, Danny Brown almost signed with G-Unit, but 50 Cent didn't sign him because of the way he dressed. According to Schoolboy Q, TDE tried to sign Danny Brown as well. <laughs> <laughs> that's the reason only reason I believe that is because it's a it's it's such a Fifty Cent thing. Yeah, like it's and it's such a Danny Brown do. thing. And yeah, Danny Brown is a weird dresser, and Fifty Cent will be like, "Nah, that nigga weird. I don't want him on my label." Kanye almost signed to Cash Money. Yeah, imagine that. It would uh... well, lawsuits. <laughs> interesting. Bro, that would no, be very interesting. That money. Um. Just because verses happened over the weekend, we got to, you know, mm-hmm. podcast tricks. Uh, Andre 3000 and Erica Badu had a child together yep. named Seven in 1997. <laughs> Andre's song, A Life in the Day of Benjamin Andre, is about his relationship with Erica Badu. Uh, and hopefully he shows up in the in IG Live. Hopefully he does. Uh, over the weekend. <laughs> it um, took Kanye 15 minutes to make the bet. Oh, I think it's the beat. The beat to Otis. They were best, okay. but it was only beat. Okay, I get it. Yeah, I mean, sometimes you're just hey, in God mode. Exactly. Right? Uh, Dr. Dre once spent 79 hours in the studio without sleeping. Damn, that's that, crazy. To me, that's more folktale than fact. <laughs> right? <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not rolling. Um, Jesus is sim- was simultaneously voted the most overrated and underrated album by Pitchfork. Yeah. And I believe it. Like, I can see. And Yeezus, to me, is, is criminally underrated. I think it's underrated, but I can see how it's overrated as well. Criminally. I don't think it's that great, but I also don't think it's bad. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Uh, no, I think it's a great album. Um, and we knew this, yes. speaking of Rick Rubin. Rick Rubin founded uh, Def Jam in his New York University dorm. That's crazy, man. Yeah. Think you about a that. bunch of boys, and it's like, yo, let's start a record label. I... That's all I got. I mean, that was just interesting. There's so much more. Guys. <laughs> like, there's at least, I saw another 49, at least 50 more facts. So go through it if you can. It's interesting stuff. Um, um, Erica Badu. Yeah. Speaking of Erica Badu, she created her own live stream company for a quarantine concert series. And so what she pretty much did is she created this website. Mm-hmm. And I think the first, like, early bird tickets were $1. And right. Then like, dollar and a dream. Second, when that wave was done, second wave came in two dollar tickets. Real shit. And three dollar wow. tickets, and these tickets give you access to her performance, her live stream performance. Oh wow! On her website, and I just thought it was pretty cool that somehow, you know, we talk about monetizing live streaming. Yeah. And well, hers is a concert, so I guess there is more to it than just holding your phone and talking. But hey, shout out to everybody I mean, for making money in a time like this. Just finding a way. Yeah. Right? And mm-hmm. and Tori, obviously we speak of we, yep. we've spoken of Tory Lane's doing this as well. And that's why his YouTube this. people were giving donations. And that's why what he wanted from it, say exactly. I'm giving it for free, give me what you want. Pay exactly. what you can. Exactly. And even if it yeah, and apparently there's like a hundred thousand people in there or some shit. Hey, shout out to him. And even if ten percent of them are that's ten thousand people donate. Like uh, it's something. Put exactly. up eighty racks for that show. Like <laughs> it's easy money. Fam. You know what I'm saying? Like some shit could really happen. So I uh, no, it's pretty dope of of Erica Badu to like she I like the way that she has carried the longevity of her celebrity. Yep. She's never wavered. She's somehow from who she is. Been there. Um While she's herself. faced a lot of controversy. Oh yeah, for, for sure. For statements that she's made. Uh, she has and she's just Erica still Badu her. Real. Mm-hmm. And she's still loved, and you know what I'm saying. Yep. Uh, and you gotta, you gotta. Still about and, and then you know she can still perform. <laughs> yep. And that, and that, and that vagina juice perfume. Oof. Vagina juice it. perfume. <laughs> Maybe I already have. Uh, what's it called? Badu's pussy. <laughs> Badu pussy. Um. Some white people we pull. I don't know why I put this under music, but it's just there. Um. Well, I'm gonna put it under post. Okay, let's put it on. Yeah, post. let's put it on. Let's un- put it on post. Oh. We're moving there, you Yeah, I'll move it. Don't worry. All right. Uh, okay, so let, let's get into that and keep it 
or leak it. Sir. Uh, for this keep it or leak it, I want to talk about uh, Tiana Taylor. Okay. Tiana Taylor. She is coming out with an album. This was tweeted by Def Jam uh, just before the weekend. Tiana Taylor, the album. Okay. June 2020. June 2020. It's coming out. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and it's called the album. I think right. <laughs> if you didn't get it, it's called the album. We got it the first time. Hear me, the it's album, great. and it's coming out in case you didn't know. And it's coming out <laughs> in June. Right? In June, not her or daughter, not, not her daughter, <laughs> not her daughter. Not, June, not no. Oh, her daughter's name is June. June was born in 2018. I don't uh, know. I don't know how old she is. <laughs> I'm just. <laughs> I'm dying. So um, is this produced by Kanye? Now, what was interesting, I'm glad you asked that, because what was interesting about this was, um, you know, we, we remember her last album, Keep yes. the Same Energy, uh, KTSC, Damn Near wasn't even promoted. It didn't, yeah. But do you recall, like, Kanye tweeting it? Or? No, we remember when he tweeted it once when he tweeted all the album list thing? Yeah. That's all he ever really did for publicity for that. I don't remember, and I'm sure they did it last time, I don't remember Def Jam necessarily promo promoing that album either. I don't think that. I don't remember them doing that. Either. This one is tweeted by Def Jam. So that make that intrigues me, because this is like, okay, mm -hmm. I mean, we know she's a part of Def Jam, right? Because even by way well, of Kanye. Isn't good music part of Def yeah, Jam? Exactly. Yeah, exactly. So we know she's yeah. on Def Jam's roster, but ah. we're not seeing the Kanye the announcement and or Kanye push and or good music mm, push really because push because Big say. Sean is talking about music. Push has been saying I'm done uh, an album. <laughs> He's, <been laughs> saying that. He's always true. done an album, <laughs> <laughs> right? Yo, he always is though. This is when I was two months later. Next album ready. Yeah, and 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 now we're seeing this, and we're seeing no recollection of what Kanye attempted last time, <laughs> right? Attempted. And you know and. To some degree, not even attempted, succeeded with. Let me say that because a lot of albums did numbers. They did. Let me not they let me not take that away from him. But what was interesting to me was that this was tweeted by Def Jam. I wonder if it's going to be that big label Def Jam push it as opposed is. to the Kanye push. Because I think Tiana's it due. Is. She's been due. She is. Like For her, five years, she's even been due. Even KTSE wasn't bad. She's Aaron it Gordon. Just didn't get produced. She's Yo, Aaron I went to uh, get published. I went to see my my bros yesterday and. You know, I had to, you know, distribute some stuff, right? <laughs> and, you know, we were trying all of our Back home, smoking meditation legal. equipment. So we need some stuff to watch, right? So we were watching just, like, best dunks. <laughs> best deals. 50 best dunks, NBA, con NBA dunk contest. 17 of them are owned by Aaron Gordon. Yo. And this guy has no chip to show trust for me, it. Trust me, trust me. The guy is criminally robbed. Like, it makes, like now you know why. <clears throat> he, he said he's never doing it again. Like, now I know why he made a diss track. I'll be offended too. Two both times he should have won. Yo, and yo, I'm not hating on my guy from from uh, Miami. Oh, all he did was in between the legs like ten times. Thank you. Uh, but when he was in the dunk contest when he was on Phoenix, same dunks. Yeah, same you're dunks. Just a nobody then. Same dunks. You're just a nobody, so everyone forgot. And Aaron Gordon jumped Aaron, over up. Yo, do you know on, how hard man. that was when he went under the thing? He should have immediately won because of that. Just, I, I'm not rolling. We're not a sports podcast, so we'll, talk, we'll save that for another I'm not time. rolling. Um, Keep her leak. Tiana Taylor's new album, The Album, June 2020. Tweeted leak. by Def Jam. Leak that shit. Yeah. I like KTSE, so I don't I like why. KTSE I don't as well. I don't like this. Uh, I like Tiana Taylor. I like her girl. celebrity. Mm -hmm. I like the couple. You like Iman Shumpert? Uh, Iman Shumpert, the rapper. <laughs> yeah, I hate it. <laughs> Yo, why are you hating on my guy, Iman? <laughs> yeah, I'm going to pull back up. Yo, no. I'm going to pull that album back no. up. I'm going to have it in my rotation. Horror. That album nah, is you average. you hating. This guy's average. hating on Iman. That, that, that project's cold. That project's all right. Uh, yeah, no, I'm here for that. Definitely leak that. Uh, 100,000% per cento. Um, okay. Are we moving into shout, shout outs? outs? Yes, sir. Let's get into these motherfucking shout outs. This week, I wanted to get really specific, really Pacific. Pacific time. On um, the shout outs, because I think they're worth going into detail what? as opposed to just, oh, shout out, they're dope. Da, da, da. Oh, yeah. I thought we can't say the reason we're shouting them out. No, we do. Yeah. But sometimes we don't like read an article saying it like factually yeah, we just yeah, say we some shit happened we we're not making stuff up we're not gonna you're come right. out here making stuff up you're right i'm discrediting all yeah. right guys um you're right Tory lane's had the number six selling album last week we don't know that shit facts so first shout out is in order uh okay. for your guy scott muscutty hey, shout out to Kid and actually this is a dual shout out for the scots hey shout out to uh, travis, travis scott. scott as well 
Um, so the Scots, the song, yeah, right. That is actually the first number one hit for Kid Cudi, and just his second top ten hit in his career. They and I didn't the know only that. other track to enter uh, into that highest tier. Um, was Day and Night. Uh, that rose to number three ooh. back in 2008. Yeah, I remember when Day and Night came out. That, was, that song was fire. Um, that that surprised so a lot of people. It didn't surprise me. It didn't. Like, we've talked about number ones are not that easy to get. Like I don't think people realize that. Like, it's a, hard. A cold get. artist don't mean number ones. Dig, right? <laughs> it, one good all. track does not mean number one. Like your uh, artist's first track, uh, even if it's hard, might go top ten at best. Yeah. At best. And we also have to consider, you know, where urban, and I'm using that in quotes because we know that I mean black people, <laughs> we really where do. urban music was at that time versus the power of the stream of the white dollar yeah. and the white artist. 2008, that pop music was, that JB, um, when JB just started coming out, that was everywhere. Because I saw, I, saw, um, I saw a tweet that said, Longest amount of time between your debut single and your number one. Uh, mm-hmm. Kid Cudi is second or third on that list now. With, because with this. of the Scots. The longest, Jay-Z. Yeah. Like 17 years. It, it's not easy. It's not easy. One. Jay-Z not was easy. arguably the best rapper, and some people would argue not the best rapper. And some, yeah. you know, Argue. Say what you it's, like, it's like basketball, man. Facts. 17 years later, he got his number one. He got his number one. It, it takes a while. It's not easy. It's not easy at all. And that's um, why when they get it, they 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 appreciate it. Exactly. <laughs> and that's why they gun for it. Mm-hmm. Right? And whatever. But anyways, um, like I said, first one for Kid Cudi. And uh, I was going to stop the shout out there. And then I read the accolade on Travis Scott. And I'm like, this nigga. This, this nigga, nigga Devin Booker. He put up uh, 30 a game. Hold up. Low yeah, key. 72. <laughs> um... <laughs> Devin Booker. Why would I compare him to Devin Booker? That's a good comparison, Wait, though. Yeah, because Devin Booker's up and coming. He's he's a name. He's I up and like coming. That's a good, wow. Okay. He's, he, he's Devin Booker's one wrong turn away from being a bust and one right turn away from being a superstar. That's how I see mm, Devin Booker. You're saying he's either Kevin Martin or Kobe? Fuck. Okay. He's, mm. he's he's on route to Kobe. No lie. He has he has the um the like the the hunger. I yes. see it in him, the hunger. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just his team sucks. You can tell by like the, the Chris Johnson one on one hoops uh, in the summertime. Yeah. By those and he dropped seventy two in the second year. You don't be doing That's that. That's nuts. You don't be doing that if you're not if you're not somebody. Oh my god. Anyways, Travis Scott uh, actually earned his third number one hit on the Hot One Hundred. Speaking of how hard it is to get number ones, Travis yes. a whole fucking Travis Scott. Now, what was crazy was that this is actually his second number one hit in the past six months. Um, Highest in the room. Now I don't know which other track I was. I was trying to read on, but I didn't find it. But let me read the rest of this. Amazingly, while very few artists in history have managed to debut a track atop of the all genre singles list, even fewer have done so more than once. The prolific rapper has now done so twice in less than a year. The Scots is one of fewer than 40 titles to open the top of the most important ranking songs in the United States. Um, I thought it was... I, I saw the article say something along the lines of a song that wasn't six months ago. Like a sickle mode type thing. That's something I'm thinking sickle mode has been number one of them. And I'm wondering if it was like sickle- when a video came out. But like a cheat for, code on the time. When you get number one, it's everywhere. Like I mean Yeah. Everywhere. Exactly. But I think they only mean I don't think they mean debuting number one. But that's what they said to come out to debut at number one. Yeah, amazing. Only very few artists have managed to debut a track atop of the all genre list. Debut means your first week. That's why they're getting this credit because they're the no, first. But no, but no, 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 no. This is for reaching number one because they're saying day and night reached number oh, three. Oh, no, I'm talking about Travis Scott. Yeah, but to debut Travis Scott track, earns his third number one. They're not talking about debut. They're just saying line, earning his third. Amazingly, while amazingly, while very few artists have managed to debut a track atop of the all. Okay, you're right. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. You're right. And he's done it twice in less than So it wouldn't be sickle mode. Yeah. It wouldn't be heist in the room. All right. Let us know, please, guys. Like, <laughs> just let us know. We're just like, what the fuck? Are I, I don't know how to search this. So I'm not going to try searching it because I know I'm going to spend like unnecessary amount of time trying to figure it out. Yeah, man. It is bothering me, though. So let us know. Um, okay. So, I mean, well, let's give yeah. them a round of, round of applause, applause for sure. It's me, it's me. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Um, second shout out mm-hmm. is in order to Jalila Harmon. Cheese. Okay, tell me more about Jalila. 
the creator of the viral uh, Renegade Challenge. Did renegade, you see that tweet? The Renegade, the Renegade, the Renegade. Which tweet? <laughs> There's a tweet of this guy <laughs> in a video just... <laughs> he's doing the renegade for like dance. two minutes he's just doing random shit and people are like the fact that you can't tell if he, this is satire or an actual tiktok <laughs> dance yeah, that's what tiktok is it tells it's you like, it's just like tiktok is just this now <laughs> yeah, go you watch always, our youtube you're you always gonna throw that yeah, it's, it's not always there. There's always one of those. You and then you gotta like, yeah, this one. <laughs> Vogue, you gotta Vogue and shit. That you know what I'm saying? There. And um, then they do this one. Then yeah, they do that. And then they do. <laughs> <laughs> watch our YouTube to watch us TikTok. Oh man, yeah, watch our YouTube if you want to see how we just TikToked. Um, so what? What? What she do? What did Jalila Harmon do, please? She teamed up with Warner Brothers. Big, big um, looks, big looks. For a new TikTok challenge in anticipation of the new animated feature, uh, Scooby, or Scoop, Scoop, I guess it's yeah, called. Scooby Scoop, Doo, it's new right? Scooby-Doo movie. Uh, it's the new Scooby-Doo movie. It's yeah. going to be releasing digitally on May 15th, yeah, which is very you know interesting in quarantine times how a straight-to-digital release is going to pan out. I'm actually very curious about that. Mm, that's true. Um, so that's definitely something you want to take a look for. And just to kind of continue on a, a little bit on Jalila Harmon, so following an insightful Teen Vogue feature uh, where she shared her excitement uh, and simultaneous frustration with not being credited for the viral Renegade Challenge at first, Welcome at least. to being black. Uh, until, you know, black people said, yo, bro, yo whoa, respect our Respect hold our up. creativity hold and up. our artistry. <laughs> Uh, Warner Bros. jumped on the opportunity to collaborate with her. So this marks her first official brand partnership since she created the uh, choreography for that challenge. And she actually told Teen Vogue at the time that her dream job is to be a choreographer shortly before teaming up with Scooby-Doo uh, to create a TikTok dance sensation. So, you know, Harman, she man. is realizing her dreams. Uh, hopefully real. this is the start of something bigger for her that... that yep adds to her brand because mm -hmm. before she's building tiktok's brand right? yeah, for real she was. so now she's building her, her brand. brand she's making a bag out of this and uh, hopefully this is additional opportunity for her salute to that you saw you see black as fuck right yo are everything? we getting into bingeables uh later or yeah i just want to say something about this that's why okay so you said everything so i can spoil it i saw everything um support oh, spoiler, alert, spoiler, oh, alert, spoiler alert spoiler alert spoiler alert, spoiler alert. <laughs> for the next five <laughs> seconds for support everything black next topic oh that was it yeah, yeah, i mean that's not a spoiler that. then yeah but like but I just, just in I, case just in case everybody like you just gotta know case. why we shout people out because we support everything <clears throat> Yes, go on. <laughs> um, third shout out is in order to Megan the Stallion, yes. um, which I've become a huge fan of Yo, over the last month. I know why, where <laughs> I came from. All of a sudden, you're like fanboying her. Huge fan, huge fan. Um, Savage is now eligible for platinum okay. in the United States for selling over a million units. Uh, thank that, TikTok for that. Straight to the point. Thank TikTok. Thank Beyonce, my nigga. <laughs> That's not the remix. That's going platinum. The original that's going the platinum. The remix counts to the... Does it really? Of course I never knew that. Absolutely. Oh, well, thank TikTok. Well, thank <laughs> Meg for this, for coming up with this, okay? <laughs> nah, I'm not thanking Meg because her, her team did not push this to be a single. This was a coincidental. I don't think so. It was. It was totally coincidental. You sure? It blew up on TikTok. It literally blew up on TikTok. But are you sure it was coincidental? Yes, it blew up on TikTok. Her album released, or whatever it released, she had two, two singles off it. A week later, a dance comes up on TikTok with this, and she does a dance, and then releases it as a single. So, so are was we never shouting out Meg or not? Nah? Yeah, shout out, no, it's still her song. So oh, <laughs> thing, but because she definitely created yeah, yeah, the like, continuing <laughs> um, fan base that goes on yeah, for this song. Oh, yeah, it's still a shout out to her. for cre It's her song. You deserve okay. all the credits. I was just tripping for but, a second. You said not her team. My bad. But I not her team. I thought yeah, you said yeah. not Meg. I'm no, like, no. what? And I think her team has fumbled up a lot of times. Hot Girl Summer, they fumbled. They were way too late to capitalize on Hot Girl Summer. Yeah, way the, too the late. single? Just, yeah, the single. They should have been like marketing Hot Girl Summer from like May. They didn't start until like August. They fucked up, Meg. You need a better team. Just saying. Jeez. Not saying gotta be me, but. Meg. If you're listening, um, well, I can do it. I'll learn on the fly. Exactly. Yeah, it can't be that hard. We were, we were I mean, it, not to say it can't be that <laughs> yeah. hard. It can't um, be that hard. It is that hard, but you know, I'm dedicated to learning. So let's get into new music, 
And for the new music, of course, we are going to shout out Boosie Fade Boosie. Um, for providing that music list for the week. Uh, this week, a lot less material. I felt it was a lot for me. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Let's get into some albums. So we have Nav with Good Intentions. Shout to Rexdale. Uh, we have Kelani with It Was Good Until It Wasn't. We have Little Sims with the drop six. I was just speaking of Little Sims last week. Did not know she was dropping something this week. Mm-hmm. And then she mm-hmm. drops this. So, you know, I, I got to bump this. Yeah. Um, we have Young Thug and Chris Brown with Slime and B. Uh, Lil TJ with State of Emergency. Lil Dirk with Just Cause Y'all Waited 2. <laughs> just Cause Y'all Waited. That's all I had. Uh, Yellow Breezy, Trap Boy Freddy. Um, I'm My Brother's Keeper. And that's really it. Yep, that's it. Yeah. In terms of singles, um, we have quite a few of them. Yeah, we have... Oh, damn. Oh, da- oh, I didn't see this single. Uh, Gorilla, not Gorilla. Gorillas, How Far, featuring Tony Allen and Skepta. Tony Allen? It says Tony Allen. <laughs> like the ball is? <laughs> that's what I was thinking, right? <laughs> Being bare defense on this track. Dead. Playing bare defense on the track. Hold on. I'm trying to load this list. Probably. Um, TM88, Southside, and Money Baggio. Um, Blue Jean Bandit featuring Future and Young Thug. Mm. That sounds like a track. Um, Jorge Smith with Kiss Me in the Morning. Well, oh, smelly as fuck, girl. Um, Charlie XEX with um, I Finally Understand. What? Stormzy Own It. I guess it's a remix because instead of having um, Ed Sheeran, it says Changmo on it. Okay. So, um, yeah. Uh, Ariana Grande and Justin Bieber stuck on you or stuck huh? with you, sorry. They're not... Are they exes? No, that's no. Selena Gomez. Yeah, Selena Gomez. Uh, they, they'll, they'll never be on the track together. They have like a beef thing or something. Yeah, they have a real beef thing. They come out on the same week. They're probably <laughs> in the same label. Uh, <laughs> Migos with Taco Tuesday. Did you hear that one? Like, I yo, love that song. Like yo, after I was like, yo, Migos have something. We always forget this. We forget we, how... We play on them too. Like, yo, man, Migos sound the same all the time. And then they drop something like, yo, they, they sound good. Yep. Lupe Fiasco with LF95. That's your boy. Um, you think he's yeah. dropping something? I, I would hope so. Okay. I would, he's definitely staying sharp. Drogo's wave was great. Oh, yeah. I just don't know right? if he's dropping something. No, I'm, just, I'm curious, too. A single, I'm like, curious, too. I never really see him drop music like that. Uh, Jay Electronica. Very interesting to see him continue to make music. This one's called Love Galaxy featuring Paul Epworth and okay. Lil Silva. Shout out to Paul Epworth. Uh, Roy Woods. I feel it. ASAP Ferg one, and 1-4. One Say it again. I think we mentioned this already last week, but Lloyd Banks with the Cold Summer Freestyle. I feel like we did. Um, Chef G with No Suburban. Money Bag, Yo, Me versus Me. Joel Ortiz and King Crooked. Uh, they actually announced that they are making a joint uh, mm. tape, if I'm not mistaken, between the two of them. Oh, that's going to be hard. I can't wait for that. They came out, well, speaking of hard, pause. Uh, they came out with a track called H.A.R.D. Hard. Featuring Mr. Or sorry, Mr. KSX. The fuck? I don't know how to say that. Who knows? Um... That's all I Yeah, that's kind know. of all I had as well for singles. Yeah, I'm done. Yeah, I'm done with that as well. Uh in terms of what we listen to now, you have quite a few projects that you got into yes. uh, first. Yes. So, uh, first I want to start by saying By all means the floor is yours. Um we got two pop smoke songs this week. Well not smoke. He featured on two songs. And I s I criminally slept on that guy. Like, he yeah. he he was about to start away. There was an it factor that I mean that we we it's not to say we didn't realize the it factor. Obviously just, we did. Yeah. It was just, um. But I, the I guess the magnitude of the it factor is like whoa. He and was it, he was about to start something. You know what, what was my real what, what what my moment for that was was um when we went to the birthday mm, at the club mm, and you see how people were wild when like, he came on. It was right. It was like the weekend he had, right like, after he passed. It was like the day after. No, it was, it was like a few days after he passed. It was a few days after. Like it was like he passed on the Thursday and we were out on the Sunday. Wow, it was a few days yeah. after. But he had like a 15 minute set. Yo, he was uh, doing, doing it with the DJ. Wild, yeah. And it was just like it was almost trance mode where I was just like, yo, people are really like loving this, man. Like, loving this. About like they're at their way. apex while this is playing. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So it, that that's kind of when my it moment clicked. Yeah. So yeah. You no, know, after that I started listening to him more and I was yeah. like, you know what? He he had something, man. Like for sure. R.I.P. Um, six nine, out of jail. Now, for the record, you plan on speaking. I want to talk him. about this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't really. I. It's all you. Um, he's out of jail. He announced it. I was actually going to talk about it on the podcast the week before, but then I forgot. He did say he was going to come with the song on Friday. He came out with a song called Gooba, 
and this song about my guilty pleasure because it's it's typical six nine shit like it's just being being ignorant him just saying he's better than whoever his op is it's just it is just funny like to me it's troll music it's like when Kanye did that um scoopity doop like no he just scoopity scoop because he's doing it to troll the, he did that to troll Drake now that we know it yeah and so yeah, yeah, yeah. he made this track this Gooba track is to troll like the his whatever gang members he he off so it's a troll track to me I don't care about six nine to me he's a clown. Clowns make me laugh. I'm here for entertainment. He's entertaining me. Damn. Did you see the clip of the rat head? No, I didn't watch emergency? really anything. No. It's just a clip. You mind you see a video? No, I didn't no. watch any video of this. I just scroll on Instagram and see the all. video. Anything like I had right. no intention on liking, retweeting, all right. commenting. Let me explain to you. He had a he was talking about being a rat or something, being a snitch, and he put a rat emoji over his head in the video. I thought that was funny. I think that's crazy. <laughs> I can get Holy and that's like he's, shit, he's a troll to me. He's just a troll to me. That's I, just, just nuts, I didn't take anything man. he did seriously. That's life and death right there, man. But hey, exactly. I'm not in his crew, so you know, do him, let him do what he wants. It's his life. Uh, two million Instagram live viewers. That shit was which is crazy. crazy. So um, shout out to him for doing. But that. people like watch like people like controversy. Yeah, you know, of course. That's controversy sells. Um, it's known. So that's not surprising to see that many people in there. No. Uh, did you tune in? No, definitely. I didn't even know what happened. <laughs> I do not look for six. I don't check for six nine. It just comes across my timeline on, like, academics post six nine half the fucking day yesterday. So that's how I found out about the two million because academics posted it. Yeah, academics. Do you think academics on payroll? Yes. Before he went to jail, yes, and now he's back out. His, his bank's open. His bank, he's like, yo, he's getting money back. Fair. Definitely, he's on his Fair. payroll. Um, but yeah, that's why I say about six nine. Um, um, I guess the first project that came out this week then. Doug. Thug and Chris Brown. Yes. Uh, none of us wrote notes. I just realized that. I listened to it and once. We, oh, you only listened to it once? Yes. When I'm it, surprised. When it came out like that week. Okay. Um, I don't know, man. It, it's, a, it's a combination I don't think necessarily sounded too good. Okay. Um, that, like, I'm not I think mad. they both sound good. Together, they just didn't click. They're like Kobe and Dwight Howard, <laughs> is what you're saying. <laughs> Kobe and Dwight Howard? Where did that call? Um, yo, you gotta that no, I remember when Dwight Howard was joining the Lakers and everyone's like, oh, oh yeah, everyone, the first time. Everyone, yeah, the first time. Everyone's like, <laughs> yes. And then it Prime didn't work Dwight out. and Kobe, that's yeah. 2.0. It didn't work out. And it didn't work out. No, that, um, that's that's what, what I meant. I just realized yes. there was a, I forgot there was a, another Dwight and, yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> that, that's how I felt about this. I don't know about you. Did you listen to this? I listened to this project a couple times. Okay. I listened to it uh, three or four times, actually. Um, mm-hmm. I thought you would like it a little bit more. I think that... Yeah, I listened to it once, so that's a one-time listen. I think... Okay. I've been reading I've been reading a little bit of information in terms of how people have been, let's call it, criticizing music lately. Okay. And also. I'm speaking to this project, and I'm speaking to the Drake project. Okay. And I'm like, are people not taking in that this is not supposed to be Jordan Pippen? Oh, it's not. Yeah. And I'm not saying you are. I'm not oh, saying yeah, you are, yeah. right? Um, I feel like when I when I when I get when I hear in the news Thug and Brown I'm coming not, out, I'm not hearing that in the news first of all. Yeah, no, no, I was um, gonna say, I'm not hearing Jordan Pippen in that. That's what I was gonna say. But yeah, I'm not like I'm not thinking to myself, yo, this is Kanye Jay Z. <laughs> this is Drake, Drake. and Wayne. Yeah. This is Cole, I'm not thinking Kendrick, that. It's not that. I'm not thinking that their intention is to make one plus one equal three. And break the internet. In fact, I think it's the other way around. I think they're going to intentionally do one plus one, one point five, one point five, one point five. Yes. And just come up with 57 versions of one point five. Because that's, it, still sound, that's still super saiyan. It is. It's still solid. It's more than one. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's still more than one. Exactly. Um, I wasn't really going crazy about the announcement. I was like, oh, I'm intrigued. How would they sound? Yeah, me right? too. Right? Um, I think they, you know, I can understand where your take comes from, especially off of one listen. Yeah. I'm going to say, or maybe I'm going to recommend, and, and I know you're going to, you're probably going to do oh, this anyway, was. just being a thug fan. <laughs> I was. Um, give this project more than one listen, mm-hmm. because even as I was bumping it this morning, um, just, you know, just cleaning yeah. my house a little bit, bumping it. I was like, you feeling oh, it? oh. This is summertime. And this is in the, on the boat. This is on vacation. That's what I was thinking. Because when I was driving, I was like, it wasn't that I didn't like the song. Just like I just didn't feel like mm-hmm. it was hitting me right now. Like, yeah. I'm like, okay, this song can hit, but it's just like, 
it's not right now. Like it's kind of cold. My windows were down. Mm-hmm, like mm-hmm. It wasn't what I was trying to listen to. That's what that's I how think I we got. Too. I think we just got to wait for the weather to get it's a little warm, better for these. Um, what what I really like. liked about this project, uh, again, when it was announced or when we heard of it, you know, I was thinking, is it going to try to adhere to the other artists? Mm. So what I mean by that is, is Chris gonna try Thug? Is Thug gonna try? Is Thug to gonna Chris? try singing? And we know both can do both. <laughs> really that's the can, funny part. They really can do it. They're what more I, talented. What I really like about this project is that neither person got outside of themselves. Mm. So we're hearing Chris being Chris. We're hearing Thug being Thug. Uh, we're hearing, yeah, you know, both of them was. fit on a song that's more club-esque. Both yes. of them fit on a song that's more singing-esque. Mm-hmm. And neither of them has to change their shit in, in, in too drastic of a fashion. And that's because they're that good of an artist exactly. that they have... They're so talented that they can switch it up mm-hmm. enough that you wouldn't, it wouldn't affect their talent or their delivery yeah. and it would still sound good. And But at the same time, uh, you know, Without, touch, yeah. touching on that, you know, because we know Chris Brown can rap, oh, yes. but Chris Brown didn't need to didn't. rap. He, he stuck to rapped. singing. Did he rap in any track? I would have to revisit it okay, specifically yeah. to note that, but just off of remembering, no, I can't really... Me too. Off first listen, I don't remember him rapping I mean, I think he has all. one or two now Maybe that I think about it. But like, yeah. yeah, but like, not enough for you to remember him. Exactly. Not like fan of a fan. We yeah. knew he was rapping a lot of times. Exactly. So something like that feels forced, even though we know Chris Brown can rap. Yes. So again, when I say with this project coming together, I was hoping there was going to be no forcing. And so boom, check. Chris Brown didn't force it. Mm-hmm. We know Thug can sing. <laughs> Thug but can we know that. Thug fits so much better in just the melodic rap lane. Yeah. He stuck to melodic yeah, rap. And I was like, this is, this is great. So this project is not giving me something that I don't want. Mm-hmm. This project fit in a lot of different worlds. Yep. You know what I'm saying? So I liked it. I, 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 think, I think it's one of those projects that will have to end up growing on you. Um, because I would say be, from first listen to fourth listen, um, first listen, I was like, okay, just mm-hmm. solid. Second listen, I was like, okay, just good, solid. but am I thinking too much of this? Third listen, I was like, okay, well, let me just not have any expectations. Yeah, just, let me just bump. Fourth listen, I was cleaning. I was like, oh, okay. And I think that's my thing. I think there was too much expectations the first listen to. Yeah. I expected like so much fun out of this. I was like, this is not so much fun. It's not. Um, but it has, you know, it has a lot of bops on it. It has a lot of good vibes on it. Um, th- that, that fucking track that has the corny ass lyrics that's going to play in the club. She too lit. <laughs> she fucked up. <laughs> I'm trying those. not to get on drunk or some shit. Um, that's going to play in the club and that's, that's going to be lit as fuck. Yo, shout out to, um, shout out to, um, was, wasn't I playing this when you came in? You were playing when I came what in. What was the song? That we were... I can't remember, but you were playing Fuck. when I came in. I didn't see like that. That's a good example. Like that me yelling it and jokingly. I never did that on the first three listens. Mm. But now that I'm playing it loud, you're coming over. It's Kinda, a little it bit more of a social. When I was listening, I was like, you know what? It didn't sound like this mm-hmm. when I was listening to it in my car. Yeah. It definitely sounded different. Like, you know, you're here. It's a little bit more social environment. We're getting ready to do the pod. You know, you yeah, got to amp yourself a little yeah, bit. Yeah, exactly. And all of a sudden, now it's hitting different. So I'm like, okay. So and I can see this being something that just grows on you over time. And I do that with a lot of music too, because I, I can't base music off my first listen. Because there's so many factors that go into enjoying something. And that's why so many times, even when we talk about it, we specifically say this, this is a first yes, listen. We say that rating for on purpose. <laughs> you guys know, like if we say we don't like it, it's our first listen. Mm-hmm. I've gone back to albums and be like, whoa, <laughs> way better than I expected. Testing. <laughs> Eventually. Um, let's get into Nav. Uh, okay, yeah, Snav. Nav's gonna be quick. Yeah, no cause doubt. Because I'm not gonna go into deep dive, because what I'm about to say will tell you why there's no need for a deep dive in Nav. This was written off a review on Album of the Year by a writer named Doubles. He said, to make an objective analysis on this artist, Nav, um, all this criticism from the beginning is deserved, but it's important to point out that Nav has been an he has had an impact in hip hop and rap. Oh, you read that article too. Oh, you okay? So you read it too. Oh, right? yeah, you're it's, so right. Because I was like, this thing <laughs> explained Nav perfect. Why I listen to Nav? Okay. And he said, yeah, he's had an impact on hip hop and rap, um, including artists like Travis Scott, Gunna, Lil Uzi, Lil Skies. Indeed, they're they, um, they do have a linear robotic flow, but against all expectation, against all criticism, it works. It somehow sells. Um, you have anything to say? No, I, I, I just think, um, not to say I'm going to be more inclined to listen to his music, and that's no disrespect to him. Um, it's just where my music tastes lie. Yeah. 
the respect level has definitely gone up after I guess realizing how important he's been as a producer. Yes, and that's the thing um, people because you you respect the prowess more now. Mm-hmm. You know, I wasn't the biggest fan of your music, and that that's fine. That's yeah, cool. That's fair. Uh, I don't think that's any indictment on him. It's not. Um, but when you hear about the producer stuff, it's like, wow, okay. You have it here. Producers you're, you're should doing, not be rappers. You're doing... <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm telling you. Um, you're doing things with more intention. You're yes. doing things with more knowledge behind it. You're yes. not just doing something. Yes. Uh, so I respect it. Yes. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. That's really all I had to add to that. Okay. Um, he said, after bad habits, which was close to torture, I agree. Um, I expect the same thing from this. He says, apart from a few tracks where he does try to switch up his melodies, this is talking about um, Good Intentions, the album that just released from Nav. Mm-hmm. Um, <clears throat> he tries to switch up his melodies on a few tracks. His flow still is robotic and over redundant. And um, we can we also say he oh sorry we can blame we can obviously blame him for weakness in writing and the subjects, which is true. This guy's flaming and holy. Damn. But in my opinion, it's far from the most annoying thing. Why is that? Because the simple fact. That when you get into the mood to en- uh wait, but it's a real fact that it's possible to get into a mood and enjoy a song when it's catchy, even if it's dumb, while enjoying someone's voice that disturbs you. <laughs> it's horrible. Either way, he's just for saying you can get into a mood. I'm not gonna where- lie, some writers cheese me. Yeah, I'm he, sorry. I, I saw an article that was talking about Drake and how he's irrelevant now and this uh, tape is not doing expectations and horrible. good for you for not being number two. <laughs> Why it was an album of leaks that did 250. Why are you hating on the man, though? Why are you still hating on this? <laughs> like, why can't why is it, people like, I hate when people wait for someone's downfall. Like, or, or, or prey or, on it. Or yeah, try like, to why? speak it. Like, why? Why do you also want to fail? Let them, let them eat. And y'all are weird. Either way, this guy's just saying you can get in the mood to listen to Nav and it's not bad. And that's mm-hmm. how I feel about Nav because I'm not going to go deep dive into his album. There really is nothing of substance on his album but there's sometimes where you're just in that mood to listen to that catchy song yeah i mean and you're not always in deep listening mood. yes exactly and that's right. what he said about now and that's how i feel about this album so if you want some catchy music go ahead listen to nav and i'm not mad at that if you don't hey, i'm not mad at you for not being for not wanting to listen to it i'm not mad at uh, that take there's no at deep all. dive into nav's album because it does not deserve it <laughs> um i'll quickly touch on Lil dirk did you listen to this i listened to Lil dirk i was man. about to say okay uh well that's a slightly longer discussion how long is your little tj discussion it's quick okay go through little tj Lil first tj then. state of emergency so he's been on the like social media news lately yeah for like having sex with women yeah with babies not, and not flying them back home, not, not flying them home and do you them. think this is why he dropped this because this dropped him kind of random 100%. Okay, I think so too. Um, it's seven songs, 22 minutes cost. Now, I, I'm going to stop you there, and, and I'm sorry to cut you off. Now, normally, the artist already has a date for the project and then yes. stirs up some shit. Yes. I'm glad you asked it like that, because I think it's the other way around. I think you stirred up some shit and was like, Fam, yo, I'm in the let loose. me just release some of them. That's what I think. He was like, his probably studio manager was like, yo, you're buzzing right now, you know? Drop that little thing we're waiting until summer. I'm not mad at that. Um, Seven tracks. Track number one, Ice Cold, he sounds good. Track number two, Zoo York. Remember the man Zoo York? Oh, my God. <laughs> skating, skater brand? Zoo York. Oh, I'm my dying. God. Um, it's Future TV 4 and then Pop Smoke, man. This is where I was like, Pop Smoke was about to start the wave. Mm. Like, that wave Pop Smoke was about to start. Correct me if I'm wrong, Crazy. Lil TJ is also on that uh, New York drill he's flow. In, kind of, because he he's from New York, so he chills with all those New York drill people. Yeah. You, you do hear a lot of drill in this. Um, the second, um, next track, number three. It's um, Lil TJ and Fibio Foreign. It's a more serious Fibio Foreign. Because every Fibio okay. Foreign track I've heard, he's like, almost like joking. Yeah. He's almost like, sounds like 6 9 No, yeah. no, no, no. Point form. Yeah. This one yeah. felt more like he was trying to tell me a story. Okay. He wasn't doing that, bop, bop, you know, all that stuff. He wasn't doing that. So it's time to, I think you would like this track too from him. Okay. If, any, might, if there's any track you should listen to, I'll say this I one. I might check it out. Um, I, like, I like drill in general. Yeah. Um, you like this. Especially New York drill. Um, and new, and Lil T sounded amazing on the chorus, man. Uh, he sounds so good. Pause. <laughs> uh, track number six, My City. It features a kid named J.I., the Prince of New York. He's known as a lyricist from when he was a young age, from like 15, 16. But he came out this singing, and he didn't sound too bad, you know? And you could hear a little bit of his lyricism in his singing. You can hear a little bit of his... Oh, wait, you're not sitting down. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sitting down yet. I'm not, okay, uh, action. Um, somehow I'm going to make that editing work. <laughs> You can hear a little bit of his singing, of his of his rapping in his singing, so it's kind of dope. 
Um, all in all, this was, I think, a good New York, new New York sound that Lil TJ right. produced. Because every track had a feature, except the first track. Okay. And you heard everybody, and everyone is almost like these up-and-comers in New York, and Fivio Foreign, and... Okay. and so this is intentionally the and saying, Chef G. this is our movement... Come see us shine. Our, our, us younger heads. We're take we're we're yes. here to claim it. Exactly, because there was a little bit of drill. There was that a boogie singing type sound. Right, right. There was that New York flow type sound. You know, that point form rapping type sound. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So um, I think it was a good move by Lil TJ to release this. That and, and I like that you say a good move. Yes, it's a good move, especially that you have records with people that have a name. Yes, Jay Critch was on this too. I didn't mention Jay Critch was mm. on this too. So yeah, I think it was good. True. Let's, let's oh, talk a little Dirk. Interesting. Or you want to talk Kalani before Dirk? Oh no, let's talk about Lil Dirk. Um, so you, I, I saw you put Lil Dirk on the list, and yeah. that's actually what made me listen to it because we both have talked about Lil Dirk, yeah. and we're like, yo, we he know he makes features. good music. He bodies features. He's one of those names we know are good, yes. and we never end up listening <laughs> to Lil <laughs> Dirk. Yo, that's exactly why I listen to this. <laughs> I was just like, you know, I never have listened to Dirk T yeah. for sure. So I see, I see, I'm scrolling. I'm like, this guy put a little Dirk. Mm, maybe I should. <laughs> right? right? So I pressed play. I'm like, wow. I'm like, <laughs> I was not disappointed. I'm like, wow. This is a really good project. Yes. It's a really good. I don't even know if I put you any did, notes. You didn't I didn't put any notes. Um, uh, track number two, Street Affection. That's probably one of my favorite songs off it. If you want to start at 210 for me, please. Uh, Street Affection. Yes, it's the second track on Lil Dirk's Dirk. album called Just... Um, and by the way, this is 15 songs, 40 minutes, so it's quick, easy, I like digestible. that I have this little extender, this little <laughs> MacBook uh, box. Because <laughs> this shit is just... Pew, pew. This shit is easy now. Uh, Street Affection. Yes. I'm play from 210. Ain't had the guns for the hot bat. Fold them, knock them out. We move the same. We all as one. That's what I'm talking about. I'm just saying you touch my chain phone, I'm chalk them out. Yeah, yeah. The one I call my brother, not my brother, cause he told them other niggas we not brothers. I can't tell a nigga that I met that I love him. I be lying, I don't love him. Get in my feelings when I pop out prescriptions. I take all these pills and I crush them. If you ain't known for having cash or that bag, they gon' treat you like you nothing. Yeah, yeah. so you've listened to it, so I'm just saying this for people that haven't. You're getting a lot of that. and Yeah. A lot, a lot of variations of that. Not say, don't get bored of that. Because one thing he did in this album that I like, and I was going to say at the end, was there were a lot of features, but I didn't get bored. Exactly. He, he switches it up enough. Um, for those that don't maybe know Lil Durk's sound, because he's obviously been doing this for quite some time, mm-hmm. um, older, especially in this singing lane. Yes. Um, you know, let's kind of think about some people who have followed his sound lately. Like who? Rod Wave. Mm, that's a good way to be. Yes, Rod Wave. Those right? melodic. So when you think about that trapper, melodic, trap real rappers. shit, trap. Rapping, you know, you're speaking yeah. that real shit, that real life experience shit, um, and definitely in the melodic rap lane, like we just played, that's gonna describe Lil Dirk sound to a T. I remember Lil Dirk from mixtape days. I was a fan of Dirk the rapper, yeah, and again, if you remember, I hated the introduction of of melodic rap. Yeah, you hated that. I hated you, it. You were not about with it. a passion. You're like the old heads. So when Dirk. <laughs> Changed to that, I stopped listening to Dirk. See, and I never used to listen to Dirk because he was like drill. And I'm like, I'm not trying to listen to drill like that. Like, mm. I got key for that. So, I actually like this Dirk. You I like, like this Dirk yeah, a well, lot. You're, you're, you're evolving into the melodic. I, I, no, I'm definitely evolving. And, and you know, it's that not. comes from the love of r and B. I I think. Yeah. Um, I liked a lot of songs on here. It, like you said, you know, he, he changed it up a lot. I think... I think he's showing that he's proving why he's the top of this genre mm-hmm. or this subgenre of hip hop. He and if you say he's not, you just don't know Lil Durk. Yeah, he is one of the top people in this subgenre he of hip hop in this melodic rap. And is. this shows that this is giving you Poof. shades of Thug, <laughs> shades of Rod Wave, shades of Roddy Rich, Roddy Rich, and Kevin Gates, and, and, and all those people. Kevin that like... Gates, and we're saying these names. Not even to say he's aspiring to be that, because we are respecting Lil Durk, no yeah. doubt about it. But we're just saying names that maybe you would be more aware of, before you as heard opposed Lil Durk. to Lil Durk. And Lil Durk is just as good, if not 
better if than, not some better of these guys. than a lot of the names being mentioned. Yes. Right? And he's been doing it for a while. So he's experienced. Like, you can tell in, his, in this tape that it's not a rookie. It's not his first tape. It's not his second tape. It's not his third tape. And you can... Um, what was I going to say? Uh, he... Oh, fuck. I was going to say, okay, I had two thoughts in mind at the same time. I forgot <laughs> the first thought. I fuck. I, I hate when that happens because you're, you're mad high level. Both, so, thoughts, both thoughts. I'm going to go straight to the second one. All right. Do you want to have a controversial discussion? Yeah, let's go. Okay. I'm, I'm about it. Lil Dirk is getting flack on Twitter. Um, there's a line <laughs> that he has that says, um, my, my daughter already bad as fuck. She only five years old or something like that. <laughs> And I don't know if it's said like that, but I, I'm assuming it's said like that. Because for it to be controversial, it has to be said in such a way like that. Um, so, again, the message behind it is, you know, my, my dad, my, da- my daughter is bad that as is fuck already, or my she, daughter is super bad already. She's only five, she's only five years old. Yes. Um, do you even take that as over-sexualization? It, it, so, I, I believe it is. Because over- it's obviously not bad. Uh, acting bad. Yeah. We're obviously talking about bad as in beautiful. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. But the question is, is it over-sexualized? I think... Because I think the yes. answer is no. I think yes, but I don't care because I know he means it with love. Like, he doesn't mean it as, yeah, I want all these guys doing this to my daughter. He means it as in, like, I don't... My daughter ain't ugly. And like, I flipped the script. And, like, I agree. How many mothers... Oh, my my son is going to be a killer when he grows up. Exactly. I mean, women are going to be like, Killers and my son, handsome my son gonna gentleman. Get all and... the ladies. I've heard white ladies say, my son is going to get all the ladies when he gets up, when he gets when he grows older. So it's like, yeah. It's like, it's not like... Is it over-sexualizing? Yes. But I don't even think it's over-sexualizing. he doesn't mean it that way, so I'm not taking... He doesn't mean it that way, so I don't take it that way. I don't even think in general it's over-sexualizing. Yeah, it's and, really, and again, just a difference of we opinion. We both agree to the same thing. Point yeah. is that he's not, he doesn't mean it that way. He means it, like, yo, it's my daughter. Exactly. Like, she's not going to be ugly. My daughter's <laughs> bad. Like, my, <laughs> daughter's, my daughter's beautiful. My what daughter's say? Sorry. My daughter's going to be ugly. Is that what you want him to say? Uh, they, I don't know, oh, Bad parenting. He's calling his daughter ugly. And people... And then, People just want to be upset. People just want to be upset. They just want to be upset, fam. Can't just let a man enjoy. People just can't let anyone enjoy. That's it. Man's getting upset (laughs) because he said a line about his daughter. I'm cheesed. It's his daughter. It's not even your daughter. Facts. (laughs) Um, But speaking of his album again, um, that one is called Just Because Y'all Waited Too. Uh, phenomenal first listen really for good, me. Really Definitely good. album no I want to go back to. Zero skips. And again, very and low. There was two, maybe three features on this. Mm-hmm. And it was a, a, a full length. 15, 15 songs at 40 songs. minutes. Yes. So, so he has something there if you can keep me alone on your voice. Exactly. Uh, 40 minutes. Exactly. And not get bored. Um, we're going to move on to Kalani. I've heard good things about this. So. Yeah. I'm going to move on to Kalani. I'm going to try to keep this uh, in, a, in a concise manner. Uh, this was 15 songs at 39 minutes. She uh, copied Dirk. Somehow I coined that as digestible v- variety. <laughs> you know these terms. You're just going to coin You're like, you're, you're like, like T.I. with expeditiously. <laughs> Finding words randomly. Oh, Digestible man. variety. Um, somehow I coined it as adjustable variety. And then I listened to Lil Dirk and I'm like, wait, hold on. He's 1540 as well. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> I guess they're both digestible variety. But you know what? I kept it as is. Um, did we talk about the artwork? No. I haven't even seen it. So the artwork is, um, you know, the front cover is her looking over her neighbor's fence, uh, okay. Mr. Wilson style. Oh, okay. Um, and her, you know, you, the, the camera's facing from her behind. Okay, I see it. I right? see it. Great that silhouette one. and whatnot. You guys can't see it. We'll right. Be, yeah. Um, but the back side of the album, um, which you can't really view on Spotify, yeah. which is a, a travesty. <laughs> I mean, now that we think that, about like, it, album covers. Like, they need to allow us to just click. And zoom in on the album cover. You got to be able to appreciate the back side and see the track list. Spotify, if you're listening. Damn. Do we got to do people's work? Damn. Jeez. Just hire us and we'll do it for you guys. The back side is the other side of that camera. So her face Mm. and her background. Google this. Her face looks more scared than curious. And her background Uh, is a bunch of destruction. And the album was called that's, It Was Good Until It Wasn't. That's that that's hard. Yes. Because there's there's, a, <laughs> there's a, like a double like from the front. If you look at it from only one direction, you're like, oh, she's just peeping over someone's fence. Yeah. Look at the other way, like, oh, no. Nah, she's trying even to da- Not mind. even the just the scenery, even down to the body language. I know we're only seeing her face in the second What's the name of this picture? Um, it Was Good Until It Wasn't. I'm searching it up because I want to see yeah. it too. So I, I really enjoyed this album. Um, I don't really want to go... Song by song because mm. it doesn't necessarily right, right. That's your cue too, but mm. I'm saying. Sorry, yeah, I'm saying. You want to go song by song? I like the features were hand selected. 
Okay. And you can tell. Well, first of all, I, I want to talk about this album as a whole. Kalani has been talking about this album for a little bit of time now in terms of just her going through shit. Yes. She's gone through life. She's Child had a birth. child. She has, um, you know, gone through public breakups yeah. and, and she's grown been, up in the public yeah. eye in a lot of ways. She's she really 25 has. years old right and now. She's been in public eye since for like last like five four or years, five years minimum. at the very least. That we've known of um, So she as a person has just grown up, mm -hmm. period. Yep. And she said that that was something that she was very excited about for this album. Growing up? Just oh, talking about that. Yeah, just course. being like, yo, I've gone, like, I have yeah, some yeah. stripes, fam. Like, mm -hmm. I can really talk this shit now. Yeah, yeah. It's not a hopeful love song. Yeah. It's an experience to love yeah. song, for example. She didn't say that. It's just me freestyling. I right? get it. Um, going back to what I was saying with the features, they feel handpicked. Okay. There's only, they're few and far between. Mm -hmm. And I'll name them Tory Lanez. Fire. Right? And that Tory track is called Can I. That, wasn't um, that a single? I don't think it was. I feel like it was. Maybe it wasn't. I don't know. Maybe Troy Lynch has been out of his name yeah. been around so much. I feel like I've heard it. Uh, and you might be confusing it with the JoJo track? I think that's what I'm confusing it with. Yeah. Yes. Even though that wasn't a single either. But it sounds like it would have been. Just because I think I've heard it before. That's what <laughs> yeah. I meant. Like, so if the album came out this week and I've heard it before, it had to be a single. So uh, Tori Lanez is on there. Um, she spoke about that on Instagram Live. She's gone on Instagram Live quite a few times. And basically what she said for that song, because that is definitely a song that goes on the playlist. <laughs> right um she said you know i wanted to make a song that was just like you know sexy and shit talking and dirty mm. talking and i had to think about who's gonna match that energy Tor that's Tori. and sure. tori was the only person that came uh, to mind listen to some tori songs like, hey, bro, really? <laughs> so um that's one of those songs i'll play a little bit of that one Little bit for like a porn star next day i just like your bro dog bitches ask me how you know her you know what I'm saying? So she's kind of getting right into it mm -hmm. yeah. off a few seconds. I'll play Tori's part. Okay. Talking okay. that talk yes. on that one. Um, definitely talking his talk on that one. So that was one that I really enjoyed a lot. Um, going back to the features being very few and far in between. Uh, there's one called Change Your Life featuring Janae Aiko. And somehow, some way, that song just feels toxic. It feels um, toxic. It just feels toxic. Change your life. You're going to change my life. You're going to change, <laughs> change my life. Yes, change I'm going to change your life. My life. Yes, I'm going to change your life. You're going to change my life. Um, that, one, that one was decent. Um, Masaigo is on here as well on a song called Hate the Club. Uh, and then Lucky Day, Lucky my Day. God, Lucky, Lucky Day, sounds good, man. Day um, smokes his feature. That one's called Can You Blame? And James Blake, which I like James Blake a lot. Mm -hmm. He's not bad. Um, like, he I, makes, I don't look he for makes him, a more I, psychedelic, yep. slower type of music. Hip-hop hip um, really likes him, though. Like rap, hip-hop, like they really fuck with him heavy. It's his voice. It's mm -hmm. his, uh, he has the same, I don't know what it's called because I'm not in the music world like that. The same shit that Giveon has. Ooh, oh, that, that um, baritone or whatever. Yeah, whatever that shit's called. <laughs> it's, it's along that same shit, it, it man. Sounds, it, it sounds hard, though. Um, nice. And the James Blake feature, it, he's he's a bit more up-tempo. And I'm okay. like, whoa, hold Star up. Now, I'll play a little bit of that one. That one's called Grieving. Oh, so that's how Kalani sounds, obviously. And let's play James what? Blake. That was Kalani. Then pretend you could weep. I was like, James okay. Blake like on that. this kind of melody? That's okay. How that's how he's feeling now. I'm not mad at that. I, I really like that. I really like to hear that. Um, a few other things I'll say about this project. Um, let's see here. What did I put in my notes here? Can I? I already spoke about that. She put it. Can she talked about that on IG Live. Uh, change your life. Everybody business. Everybody's business. Track number eight. I don't know if I'm tripping, but there's tripping. a part... You know that song by Robin Thicke, Lost Without You? Yes. Um, there's a part of this song I feel like it sounds like a sample from Lost Without You. It possibly could be. Um, this one's called Everybody Business. I'm going to play the part that I'm in question. Just listen to it. In, don't listen to it too specifically. Just, all right. Listen, just, listen just, to it. Just 
you know. Listen to it. Need <laughs> up when I'm in town. Every word they talk, try not to get at all. I know it's running, to know me from nothing. Still got me to shake it off. I know I can take it all. I know they fronted, you know they fronted. Or fronted by Pharrell. Look. This is what I'm saying. Do, 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 this do, is what I'm going to say. Do, I'm going to reach out to her team. Do, do, I'm Robert Thicke. I'm like, yo, do, do, where'd you get that inspiration from? She's going to say do, she made do, up do, on her own. Do, and then I'm going to hit them with that do, lawsuit do, after and say, give me my song. Do, it do, it, it sounds like do, that Robin Thicke song. Or Frontin' by Pharrell. It sounds like Robin Thicke song. It don't sound like Frontin' by Pharrell? I feel more Robin Thicke than I do, Robin you know. And like I said, if I'm Robin Thicke, I'm going to reach out to her team and be like, bro. I thought it was tripping. Where do you guys get inspiration from? I thought it was tripping. Oh, nowhere? I'm going to sue you guys. <laughs> Real shit. <laughs> um, done. The way that I would conclude this album, and uh, well, first of all, Lexi's outro. My God. Is Lexi Kalani. your daughter? I don't know at all. Okay. I thought it was going to be like her daughter talking. But I'm like, this is cool. I think her daughter cool. is less than a year old. I'm like, this would be cool. This is very Blue Ivy esque <laughs> It really is. And then all of a sudden, this one has no features listed. And then all of a sudden, Kalani says, move over, Beyonce. I'm the best rapper in the league. Uh-huh. Lexi is, is That's the shit. Ain't got no time to make no accidents, cause you gotta be passionate. If you want something, you gotta go at it. And that's gonna make you the baddest bitch, cause ain't nobody hear you shit. Can't nobody hold me back no more. Huh. Yeah, look. And can't nobody hold me back no more. I've been on the right track so far. Don't even be texting them back no more. Cause my mind on my money. These niggas ain't where it's at no more. I okay, okay, Kalani. Okay, Lexi. Oh, sorry, Lexi, not Kalani. Kalani <laughs> Holy left. Holy shit, I'm like, she smoked that. Hey, she smoked Lexi. that. Um, the way that I would conclude the album, just in terms of what I have in my notes here, this album, to me, it's uniquely its own. Okay. It doesn't really, you know, it, the subject matter, if you, you can choose how you want to listen to it. Ooh, choose your own, Ralph. Right? You can, you can really pay attention to the subject matter and okay. feel the lyrics of what she's saying. Uh -huh. Or you can just enjoy the melody. Well, Kalani's always been like that to me, um, in my opinion. Like I've always had Kalani, like mm -hmm. she's always been good at making music that you can just bump to. Mm -hmm. And if you want to listen to the subject matter, and that's you, the thing, right? Like if you're well. not paying attention, you could think it's like a, like you're bopping, yeah, and then you hear like the lyrics and you're like, oh, fuck. she's, she's spin. This she, nigga spin. Not even that. Like oh, she's talking about pain and shit. Like oh, fuck. Let me not bop. Like you know what I'm saying? Like it's <laughs> not. Can't be bopping. You know? She's talking about heartbreak. You know what I'm saying? Um, I think that's a skill. It is. I think that's a skill to have it because is. it shows that your music is, I hate to use the buzzword digestible, but it shows that your music is digestible to multiple different ears mm -hmm. in multiple different audiences. That's good, man. Um, you know, again, Kalani is one of those names where I'm very aware of her craft and her fan base and her talent, but I never really got into her music. So just being a little bit more of an R&B fan now to press play on this, I can so. immediately sense the quality on this. Oh, that's right? good. Like, I, I feel like immediately... If we're talking 2020, this has to be a top R&B project. It has to be. It checks all the boxes, in my opinion. Um, it, like, if you've been following, like I said, the body of work, it's something that it has that it factor to it. Just everything leading up to one another. You know, the way, she, the way she's gone through life, the way uh, even quarantine coming down where she's now learning how to do more things on her own, like shoot her own music videos and edit Jeez. her own work and yeah. make beats. And like she's doing, she's doing more on her own. creative things. And you, she already is a creative person. That's good, right? man. Shout out to Kalani. Um, so like I said, it's a top quality R&B project. To me, it really has that it factor. Uh, and I really think it's just everything coming into fruition uh the way that she wanted it to uh it's a high level r&b project i think it, that goes without saying in any way shape or form um a lot of people have said this is this is no skips mm -hmm. and i I've completely that agree um, no with that opinion and like i said you know when you're talking top r&b projects at the end of the year uh, or top projects period there's no way you don't have at least mention this mm -hmm. um to do that would just be a hater yeah. In my opinion, I say um, so, so I'm yeah, like I listen. Kalani, um, you know, it was good until it wasn't a top quality project. Definitely worth a listen. Everyone should check. Go check that out. That one out. Um, you bumped a few singles. Or I did, just... but let's not talk about this again. It. it was there. Look, when I write some stuff, we have no, we don't have that much notes. Why do you think I put? Why do you oh. think I put a thread of random hip hop facts? I thought we were gonna spend fifty seven minutes on that one. Yeah, um, on Mondays, there's nothing to write about by by. by Friday, Friday? 
We're like, oh, let's not talk about oh this. Oh my god. Uh, okay, so I guess before we go into post potpourri, oh yeah, um, let's get into our rotation. So yes, what sir. is in your rotation, sir? I'm starting this week off. Yes, you are. Okay, scratch, 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 scratch. All right. What's your starting point? How do you know where you start? I know what I listen to. What what I, what I said last time I was on a podcast. Real shit, eh? That's. Did, did you like a an album I listened to like Friday or? That's hard to remember. Saturday, like I know, like. See, like for me, I know I listen to so much fun. Well, I know easier on Friday. Right? That would help us out. How? Press play at Trinity Three's podcast on Monday. <laughs> so I just go swoop, 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 swoop. Trinity Three's. Okay, so anything from there. That's so yo. <laughs> <laughs> Shh. This nigga's this brought this nigga brought a gun to a knife fight. This nigga spitting. <laughs> <laughs> yo, that this nigga spitting kills me every time. It applies to everything. This like, nigga spitting. This nigga spitting. Damn. Um, Rod Wave, Ghetto Gospel. Okay. Um. Oop, 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 noop, noop, noop. Dum, 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 dum. Dark Lane demo tapes by mm. Drake. Shh, that shit, that shit's not leaving. I went to go listen to Beastie Boys. Just like the mm. first, the, the few mm. hits on Spotify. Mm-hmm. Just it's been a minute, and mm-hmm. I enjoyed it. Honestly. I'm not really mad at that it. at all. Um, Goat World by um Nate Smalls. Still one of my favorite projects that's come out so far. I've been on a Juice Wave world. I think just because he. A lot of juice features world he's been. Wave. Oh, sorry, Juice right. World Wave. It's juice hard wave. to say. Juice. You said Juice, juice wave. wave World. <laughs> he's been on a lot of features lately. Yes. So because yeah, yeah, because yeah. I've been bumping a lot of those, I went to buy. I went to bump Goodbye and Good Riddance. Mm-hmm. Still fire track. Then I went to go bump This Is Juice World. Then I went to go bump Melly versus Melvin mm. by YMW Melly. I see the wave that you were on this week. <laughs> yeah. I'm not mad at it at all. Like you're kind of like reminding me to like get on that wave. Foster the people, mm. Sacred Heart Club. Fam, this guy's on a wave. <laughs> yo, right now. Yeah. I don't know what. Yo, I, I don't know oh, none of what I was thinking. Oh, this guy's on a wave right now. Yo. <laughs> I don't know, man. I was just like I'm listening to your picks. Like, mm. <laughs> right? You're never this guy's like on that. a wave so right now. Six nine, six nine. Damn. Okay, no. I'm and not. actually, that, that's about where it ends. Other than the newer stuff, because I've been bumping a new podcast. Mm. It's called. Um, Black men can't jump in Hollywood. And there's three black men just reviewing movies mm. from the point of black men. And I, I've listened to mm. movies. And now listen to these guys. I'm like, yo, when I listen to white people, they, they don't get it. Yeah. Some, and they, they talk about blacks, like black, like things that... But they that, don't get the experience. They can't yes, connect. The white, they can't see that white through people the lens. will miss. I'm like, oh, yeah, this movie was good. Like, no, they made a joke like this that might have slipped the wrong way. And What, it, uh, what lane of movies? Like, do they stick to a lane? Uh, yeah. Time um, period? Um, with leading black actors or actresses. What's it called? Um, black men can't jump in Hollywood. And the funny part is that just writing some, a lot of movies have leading black actors, like Star Wars. Um, John Boyega's a leading black actor. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, fuck. Remember he had the contractual you issues? You don't think about those stuff when they talk about it. You don't. Yeah. But, yeah, and then they go into, the, they talk about writers, like black writers are in it. I think they all want to be in Hollywood. Like, one of them wants to be an actor, one wants to be a producer. I'm interested. So, they're actually yeah. in the industry. I'm so I'm interested. I like it. I look at movies they watch, and yeah, it's, it's really good. So, I've been, I've lived, that's been killing a lot of that's my time. That's crazy. Fun just stuff. get it, like, obviously, I've been talking about getting more into, like, just watching shit. Because I yeah. don't watch shit, man. Come on. Don't watch Let's be shit. honest. <laughs> you don't watch shit. <laughs> and when you do it. I just, I listen to shit. I don't watch shit, You man. know what? I got to ask you a question, but I'll, wait, I'll save to random thoughts. Okay. Uh, my rotation. What's in your rotation? My rotation, uh, though. Let's unlock my phone here. Um, I started with Bears Like This by Spillage Village. I really wanted to bump... Just the whole the whole project. <laughs> um, for some reason, I wanted to listen to Justine Sky. It happens sometimes. And I was like, and I think it's because she keeps hopping on Timberland's uh, uh, IG live, and they, Timberland makes a beat for her, and she just sings. And I'm like, this is that's cool. Kinda cool. <laughs> <laughs> like, that's kind of cool, though. So I bumped uh, Ultraviolet by Justine Sky. I really enjoyed that project. Um, for some reason, I felt like bumping Amory. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Um, one thing just was in my mind, you know what I'm saying, for some reason. So I bumped uh, This Is Amory on Spotify. Yeah. A few of her top tracks. <laughs> like you were talking about top tracks. Hey, sometimes you just got to get a feel for them. Like, just you a know, feel. That's all I just need. a little just taste. A little taste in the water and, and I'm, I'm good. Uh, Before Love Came to Kill Us, Deluxe Version by Jesse Reyes. Mm, uh, I still enjoy good, that man. project. Uh, top to bottom. Yeah, that's such a good project. The same way I did on day one. I haven't given it more love, but I need to go back and give it some more love. Slime and B. Uh, I realized uh, after this, after the second and a half listen, 
um, that I was listening to the clean version. You, so, oh, yeah. <laughs> it happened to you too. I, that, I think that affects my listen to because I'm like I heard like her first beep. Like it took like the second track for me to hear like a bleep. And yeah, like, yeah. Okay, I was like maybe it was intentional. And then Chris Brown came in on a verse, and I was just like bleep 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 bleep. bleep, bleep. Like I'm hearing the thing like, is like she too lit. She trying not that, to get on. Mm. Yeah, I'm like, and it like it was so bad in one song. I was like, yo, because I I I mm, tracks a lot in my head, right? Because yeah. I don't say the b word and stuff, right? So I mm, and I mm, 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 but like, you don't want them to. Do, I don't want them to. Do it. Like, you say it for me. <laughs> Come on, man, that's not right. That's not right. Yeah. Um, I was still on that Earth Gang wave just in general. Like mm-hmm. I, I spoke about Spillage Village already. So I bumped a uh, Mirrorland mm. and shout out to Cage episode ninety seven. Uh, go check Cage. out that Damn. interview, True North interviews, that volume three, a uh, episode ninety seven of the True North interviews. Sorry, True North interviews. And episode ninety seven of the True North views podcast uh, featuring Cage, rapper Cage. from Toronto. Uh, he talked about that project being underappreciated. Yep. Since he said that, it's really been in my mind. Because, you know, low-key, um, you probably thought the same thing. And it felt, when he confirmed it, you're like, you know what? Yes. And, and I feel right. like I almost talked myself into underappreciating it. Mm. Where I eventually stopped listening to it. <laughs> so I, I, I kind of brought it back up. I gave it maybe two or three spins during the week. Oh, that's um, best. Really enjoyed that. Yeah, Bears really like good. this too much mm. as well. Now, I don't normally bump that one. But that one has Can't Call It on there. And if you don't remember Can't Call It, the track Can't Call It is the track... That became Jermaine's interlude on the Khaled album. Oh, the beat, right? That's crazy. But it's everyone else. It's 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 Boss, Good. Earth Gang, and JID on mm-hmm. there instead. Um, so I really enjoy that one. Uh, I bumped uh, "Too High to Riot" by Boss again. Just, <laughs> you're on a, you're on a I was dream really in a Dreamville wave. wave. Um, my soul needed cleansing badly. I don't Are know why, nice? but it was poisoned, bro. Solange? Somehow. I bumped when I get home Solange. He got it. About six times. Jeez. I don't know what it was. I lit the sage. It happens sometimes. I lit the incense and I bumped when I get home 17 times. Um, 17 times. I went on a little mini Chicago wave. I bumped uh, Mick Jenkins, The Circus. Mm. Still a top project. Zero skips on that one. God That's damn. Fire. We talk about no skips. I've heard that too. And uh, the bucket list project by Saba, um, thoroughly enjoy that one a lot. That's one that just came out, right? No, that was that's his 2016, oh, okay. if I'm okay. not mistaken. Uh, Twenty, yes, yeah, 2016 project. Um, Shea Butter Baby, mm-hmm. Ari Lennox. Ari Lennox. A Muse in her. Then I went on a little bit of Toronto Wave. A Muse <laughs> in her feelings um, by Division, of course. Dark Lane demo tapes by Drake. Grizzly. It's not on my list, but I know I bumped it. The Party Next Door. Uh, uh, what's it called? Uh, Party Mobile. Track. Party Mobile. Oh, Party yeah. Mobile. <laughs> party mobile party mobile is underrated bro i'm just gonna say hey, you tell me i'm gonna just say that party next door party mobile um yeah, party mobile <laughs> <laughs> i bumped the kalani more than once i bumped the chris brown young thug i already mentioned it more than once six six thousand times and uh the final album i'll mention because once you cleanse your soul with solange i'll mention uh, i'm gonna recommend anyone do this that needs soul cleansing listen to when i get home solange several times <laughs> 17 and then when you feel cleansed, listen to Nipsey Hustle Victory Lap. Jeez. So I did that. It's been felt you know, nice <sighs> after. Nice got, shower. You know, I'm back. Nice internal shower. You ready to know what it is? This guy lathered and repeated. So that okay, I mean that yeah, that that's the end of my rotation though. Um okay. so let's let's finish off that music potpourri in that case. Zer. And uh somehow, some way we are going to go into the post potpourri. Over the one hour, over the ninety minute mark, um, somehow, some way. Somehow. Some I way. thought I if I don't know if you noticed, but I pre named the episode. You did. Uh, it's no longer relevant. Uh, I really thought we had an hour showing us. Cut in hell. I really thought we had an hour. We always no, yeah, we always <laughs> no. We always say that somehow. <laughs> Real shit. Fuck. All right, man. Let's get into this post potpourri though. Um, Black Mirror. What about Black Mirror? <laughs> oh, you didn't even read this. No, I didn't. Black Mirror. I have a hot take about Black Mirror. Go ahead. I think after the first four seasons, or after like the first two seasons, the show's not that great. I agree with you. Okay. I think, but, 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 I feel like they they got it back in the final season with like half of the content. Okay. So, because I agree with you, I actually think Black Mirror is one of the most overrated shows on the planet. I think beyond it is. season one, episode two. Yes, exactly. <laughs> well, I was like, season one, episode two. I'm like, okay, like, it's not it's like, that. Uh, and I get it, but like, it's like, uh, or maybe season one overall. If I were to yeah, kind of give, give it, season it, one, it's period. full credit. Yes. Um, the final season kind of came back a little harder. Okay, I'm not I was gonna okay lie. With it. I'm not gonna lie, but 
speaking of new seasons, uh, Black Mirror, if I can find it on my phone here. It says um, creators. They said that we're not coming out with a new season right now. Okay. And the reason why they said that is because the world is too bleak for season six to currently happen. Now, again, the premise of Black Mirror is to show how far we've come in our bleakness um, to, to kind of show things in the, altered yeah. reality, yeah, however can, you want to kind of frame the yeah, show. Whatever it is. Um, so they said the world is too fucked up right now to even make Black Mirror. Yeah. And I just thought that was an interesting fact um, because Black Mirror is supposed to be one of those shows that could do explore think, all possibilities. So do you think this is a, a market employee? Yes. And then two months later, it's here's for eight, here's three episodes. Like, oh, you know what, actually? <laughs> the world's you, not bleak anymore. Since y'all asked for it. <laughs> um, um, Briggs versus Tyson? Yeah. Yeah, Tell you, me about didn't it, you have some Tyson shit in here? I did because I, I deleted it because I, I didn't have the video. You put the Briggs versus Tyson. It was just Tyson boxing. Oh, yeah. And that, it, lo- it looked Oh, good, yeah, you're man. like, fine. It was just like. He actually, I don't know if you've seen, uh, there's, a, there's a picture going around that'll show him, I think, January, early January. I saw you posted it. Compared to, yeah, on my story. Yes. Yeah. He, he looks. He looks D's, man. Looks very, very much in shape. Happy yeah. to hear that. Um, so this, this kind of had its own story in a sense. Uh, Shannon the Cannon Briggs. Um, for those that don't know who he Shannon is, the he's the guy who sings "Let's Go Champ." Not sing, sorry. He says "Let's Go Champ." Let's go champ. Um, Let's go champ. Let's go champ. You know Anthony Joshua. He he publicly supports Shannon Briggs, um, former heavyweight con- uh, contender, mm. former heavyweight champion, mm. uh, and he has been looking for a, a, a heavyweight fight. fight for quite some time, and not in a desperation way, in a, like a way where it's like, "Yo, fam, I really want to fight yeah, you." Yeah, it's like it's like you <laughs> play basketball all the time. He's like, "Yo, I want to play one on one with someone." Mm-hmm. That's mm-hmm. what it is for boxing. Just it's a sport. We. We spent a good portion of our life yeah. dedicated to this. We can't just quit cold turkey and think like we're going to be okay. So Shannon Briggs posted on his Instagram, and it's probably deleted now, but it basically showed Shannon Briggs versus Mike Tyson mm. bare knuckle fighting. Was that real? Is that um, real? Now, if, maybe you don't know bare knuckle fighting, but it is an up and coming yeah. alternative MMA league. I'm not a fan of it. Um, the biggest fight that I was aware of was Artem Lobov versus Pali Malinaji. Artem Ooh. Lobov is Conor McGregor's boy. And uh, Conor and Pali Malinaji had a beef at one point. Ah, so it was kind of... Exactly. Friend of a friend. You beef my friend. Exactly. You got, friend, you got beef with me. That type of thing. Um, so that was the, the biggest fight that I was aware that they had. And I okay. knew it was going to kind of be a platform for bigger or, or for kind of, you know... Um, no, no ha- for lack of better terms, has-beens. I would say uh, dream matchups, and I use the quotes very loosely. Dream, uh, like a like a, like a f- MMA, Artem Lobov versus a boxer, a Pali Malinaj. Yeah. So, a 50-year-old Tyson versus a... 75-year-old. Not 75, but you get what I'm saying. Some yeah, older, some man. shit. You know, yeah. exhibition-style yeah. entertainment, right? But nonetheless, uh, Shannon Briggs posted that he was going to fight Mike Tyson. Mm. Um, the rumors were at the time where that bare knuckle fighting championship offered Mike Tyson twenty motherfucking mil. Ooh. And I was like, huh? I was like, what? Ooh. Um, and an update did come out. Uh, I'm not going to like kind of really give the article full credit because this is from DraftKings, but the writers don't even know what they're talking about because. They're acting like bare knuckle fighting is a nobody, and they're not. They're just an mm-hmm. up and coming league. Yeah, just up and coming. Um, so BKFC, which is bare knuckle fighting championship, they actually they they did reach out to Mike Tyson, um, Mike Tyson's management team, with an offer to get involved with them. But Tyson's management team confirmed uh, that they rejected that offer. Okay. Uh, apparently, word of acceptance was leaked. Um, what was interesting was that Shannon Briggs posted it, and I wouldn't be surprised. Shannon Briggs is a, is a smart person. I wouldn't be surprised if he has investment in BKFC. Ah, so he wants. To <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So whether the whether or not the fight was happening, he was going to make it sound like it was happening. Yeah. Um. So you know, just an interesting thing to bring up. Hey, I'm sure. actually Tyson. very happy to see. We talked about Tyson getting back in shape. Um. Mm-hmm. You know, wanting to do exhibition bouts. BKFC has now confirmed that yes, we did reach out, but there was just no, no offer accepted. Mm-hmm. Throw more money on the table. Uh. Maybe. Money talks. Right? Money talks. Uh, Jamie Foxx and Candace Parker. Yeah, Jamie Foxx is going around the world, man. First of all, did you see this? Are they dating? No. Oh, I thought so. It was. No. I didn't, I didn't see it. I just so they were talking movie. about uh, Candace Parker was on live. Right? Right? Yeah, music. With Jamie Foxx. And somehow, I don't know how these lives just happen. Like, why is Candace Parker on live? I was going to say, like, what, what, where's the connection there? Well, they're both basketball people. Jamie Foxx is in the NBA All Star. Game crowd yeah, that's true. Okay, I guess. and like mingling and like legitimate mingling, uh, yeah, not yeah, like, like yeah. both some bullshit. In, you know, so he's yeah. in the mix. 
Um, so Candace Parker was on live with Jamie Foxx. Candace Parker looks flawless, by the way. Well, she looked flawless. Yeah. And she's talking to Jamie Foxx. I, I, I'm going to play it and then obviously yeah. watch it as it's playing because she looks flawless. <laughs> um, Jamie Foxx is talking about the art of impression. Okay. And for example, he says Kermit and Jay-Z comes from the same throat position, for lack of a better Kermit word, pause. Jay-Z. <laughs> in terms of how he mimics them. Yeah. So he's just talking about it. It's better if I play it. Okay. Impression that I've ever <laughs> heard. Well, you do it from music, right? right? Yeah, music. You learn the octaves of see music. See if I can yeah. turn it up. No, we're good. You learn the you you learn the like you learn the uh the 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 tone first. So if it's and then certain people have certain things like Jay Z. This is weird. Jay Z and my Sammy Davis Jr. and my Kermit the Frog are the same thing. Okay, Je- because Jay Z was is, asking to do Kermit. So Kermit is like, uh, Kermit the Frog, Sesame Street, he was here with the uh, three little pigs. But if I drop the octave, you know, it's crazy. It's you know, stored off in Marcy Projects. <laughs> and would be, so it's the same. And then it's Sammy Davis Jr. Because sometimes when... So that's the same it's thing. Crazy. There's a certain thing that I do with my throat. And then when it comes to, like, say a Dave Chappelle. Sorry. Dave Chappelle is a little bit of this. <laughs> it's this, this. There's that. There's that. There's that. This. Because when you think about it, Dave Chappelle, and he talks very smart because he'll say a very smart word to go with his ghetto shit. I was incensed. I was chartreuse. I was beside myself. And then it's a pop. But that's the young Chappelle. The old Chappelle who's smoking cigarettes, got the alcohol, working out, trying to be. Man, see, that's what they said about Michael Jackson. Man. That's what they said. That's what they said he would do, man. And I was pissed about that. So now... It's a matter of getting the demeanor. Like and the then, if you look at Mike Tyson, a lot of people do Mike Tyson like this. Mike Tyson, can't wait, blah, 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 blah. But Mike's actual voice, when you call him and talk to him on the phone, away. is what I'm going to do when we do his movie. Is this? I say, Mike, how you doing? I'll pray to I line my brother. I'm happy. How are you? I'm good, man. What's up? So I'm just, I'm just, I'm happy. You know? I don't have all the crazy people around me anymore. I have the money, all that crazy. I don't have any vultures around me. So nobody's trying to take anything. That's that exactly so how he sounds sick. on the podcast. That is so sick, man. I did not know he could do that many voices. Oh no, don't do that. No, like I didn't know like he can do that many voices. No, I, I just I'm not just like I just didn't know he could do it. I'm not saying like I'm not saying like I like, in a disrespectful way. I didn't know like I yeah, knew he was man. talented, but Jamie Foxx to me will always be one of the most talented people on the planet. Um, I've always thought even the Jamie Foxx show Jamie was Fox just shows. a criminally was underrated. Up to now, as yes. much as it's like low key garbage, because it's like just five people in the whole show <laughs> for all seven seasons or however long it is. <laughs> yeah, it when is. you think about it, but it, it, it's so like it was written your, well. Like the jokes land so, so well. funny. Like the jokes land so well. Oh my god, I like it. Um, um, Shape yeah. of Water. Did you watch Shape of Water? I did not watch Shape of Water, oh, okay. but didn't it win the awards in 2017? Yeah, because it's by Guillermo del Toro, and he's one of my favorite directors. Oh, he's a, but he's a bad guy now. Oh, is he? He got canceled. Oh, he did? Oh, I didn't know. Some shit like that. Oh, okay, never mind. <laughs> <laughs> nope, ignore that. White People Reports. The White People We Pull. Um, Elon Musk and his wife, um, um, I don't know her first name, something, Grimes, gave birth uh, to their child. Um, not Brent Grimes. Grimes. Grimes Grimes. Just Grimes oh, Grimes, it's Grimes, right? Grimes? Isn't it? Not Grimes Grimes, but... The, like just Oprah, like or just like Grimes? Grimes. Oh, I didn't know. No, oh. like isn't it just Grimes? I don't know. I actually don't know. And the first time I found out about her name was in this article. Okay, <laughs> like, I'm not even lying to you. Fair, fair, fair. Um, they gave birth to their baby boy, and they decided to name him. I can't spell it. Well, I can't. I can only say how it's spelled. Okay. Oh, sorry. I can't say how it's spelled. I can only say how it sounds. It sounds X Ash Archangel, but it's actually spelled X. A E letter combined, A dash twelve, X because X is an unknown variable. The A E combined because that's the uh, Elvin spelling for A I because they both love artificial ex- artificial intelligence, and A E because it's the precursor to S R seventeen, which is their favorite aircraft. No weapons, no defense, just speed, great in battle, nonviolent. Is this child of? Uh uh, daughter, son, son. Man, if this guy don't turn eighteen and change his name to Scott, <laughs> yo, like he about to be flamed. What the fuck are you talking about? X Ash Archangel. Okay, so I followed it up until the AI, because that's like Esh. But where does the S H Archangel come from? 
Oh no! So the name of that plane, the A twelve, is called the Archangel. Bumble That's God. actually what I'm cheesed. <laughs> but they don't. They didn't say A twelve in the name. They said Archangel in the name. But rather than saying Archangel, but according to California law, where they live, names have to be made up of twenty six of the letters in the alphabet and nothing yeah. else. So we'll see what happens. Yeah, yeah, that's stupid. Uh, let me just check my phone. I think I screenshot. Well, let's see if anything's thing. trending while you check your screenshots, um, because we are. Yeah, wrapping it up here. We are wrapping it up, wrapping it up, wrapping it up. Oh, Giannis, Giannis got um hacked. Yeah. Those, oh my God. So those tweets were funny. I that won't even so, lie. That was just so disgusting. Honestly, like, I read some of them that that had more of the joke element, and as soon as I read the the Kobe one, like yeah, halfway Kobe through, one, I was like, yeah, man, that was unnecessary. Nah, my like. stomach just sank, and I just closed it. I'm like, I don't even want to see the rest, fam. I really don't. Um. Um, yeah, that's all I have actually. Okay, that's all I have as well. French Montana says, <laughs> French Montana says, Jay Z and Drake probably got more hits and more hits in Nevada. Yeah, they and probably the, got more hits than me. And then the comment says, I don't know, man. <laughs> the Rock KD might beat me one on one. Yeah, they might. I might be honest. <laughs> they might, yo. They might. Oh my God, man. Yo, French is. French I mean, is... listen, man. You got to give it to French for the for the confidence, hey, man. man. A for confidence. You really have to. You really have to. Well, that's um, all I have, actually. Okay. So in that case, please cue the music. Because with that said, that will take us to the end. The unfortunate end of another episode of the True North Views Podcast. Episode 105 went way longer than we thought, but it's okay, man. We got a lot of shit to say. Um, if you enjoyed any part of this episode, if you enjoyed all parts of this episode, or if you maybe enjoyed no parts of this episode... We are going to recommend and ask that you do one thing. One thing. Please continue Please. the conversation. Continue. Whether it's through love, hate, or indifference. indifference. By telling a friend, tell a friend to 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 tell a friend. And I'm lying. I wouldn't say through hate or indifference. I would say if you don't like it, still spread it to say, yo, I don't like this podcast. You should listen to you it. You should listen to it. Let me let me know your take on it. Because Let me know if you don't like it. You know I've listened to 105 episodes of that. You know what I'm saying? Is it me? Is it is it testing? Is it or testing? is it <laughs> it's testing? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Um, as usual, guys, I go by the name of Harris. Um your skirt master, Mr. Triple Double himself, and my assist. Stealing 60 <clears throat> 70 mil from the CTC. Uh, NBA champion. You can call me just Shola. And I guess Hold on, hold on! Hold on! Before we go. Yes. Please tell them the two rules in life right now. Um, please stay safe. <laughs> and watch out for the wastemans. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Yeah, watch out for the wastemans at all times. Every um, day. Please, and stay safe out there, guys. Um, everyone's starting to go outside. It's a lot of motherfucking traffic. It's warm, man. People um, can't keep you waiting when it's warm. Just be responsible. Exactly. Stay in as much for. as possible. Go out when necessary. As much as humanly possible. Please stay indoors. Anyways, we are going to get out of here. It's the True North Views Podcast, episode 105. Peace.